We are here on the field of Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. Just prior to Game 2 of the World Series, the Atlanta Braves with a 1-0 lead over the Cleveland Indians. Again, the big concern is uh, their second baseman, all-star second baseman, Carlos Baerga for the Indians. Uh, Baerga has just spoken with our Jim Gray. He has told Jim Gray that he is wearing an air cast on that ankle tonight. He is going to play, but he is quite uncomfortable with that air cast. I also spoke with Mike Hargrove just moments ago, and Hargrove told me that after watching Baerga in uh, batting practice, and uh, practicing out in the field that he feels that Bayerga is only about 80% and that uh, if Bayerga cannot go tonight or have problems, he will put Alvaro Espinosa at third base. Meanwhile, for the story from the Atlanta Braves before this Game 2 of the World Series, Jim Gray had a chance to sit down earlier with Atlanta manager Bobby Cox. Bobby, just a tremendous outing last night by Greg Maddox. He throws only 93 pitches. Does that change your thinking for Game 4? Will it be Maddox or Avery? Well, I know one thing for sure, Jim. He's certainly able to go on three days now with that low of a pitch count. But uh, I still want, I'm not going to make a decision until tomorrow night in Cleveland, probably, after he throws a little bit on the side. And we'll see. You know, we can go with the other guy. We'll give uh, Mad Dog his proper rest. And you know he's going to come up with a great game. And, you know, Ave's been shooting lights out here. So he would be good also. It's a decision we're going to make as a, um, a coach and staff. And uh, we'll make that tomorrow. Do the Braves need to win this series to justify what's gone on over the past several years and, and the opportunities that they've had in the past? Well, I guess. We, we're very proud of what we've done, and I don't care what anybody says. We, we've been winners, and uh, so we haven't won a World Series. I mean, it's not the, the end of the world, but we're trying as hard as anybody can humanly try. And um, it's not the end of the world, and uh, we're all not going to go kill ourselves or anything like that. But, yeah, we'd like to win to shut a few guys up in our town, yeah. Bobby, good luck this evening. Thank you. All right, let's send it back out to Hannah. Coming up, a look at tonight's starting pitchers. Tom Glavin, at age 29, about to make his fifth start in World Series play. He will face the Indians. 40-year-old Dennis Martinez still looking for his first World Series win. Back to Fulton County Stadium right after this. Go to the wall. For the best highlights. Whoa! The best sports. The best seat in the house. Now that's action. Go to the wall with Fred Rogan on Sunday Night Sports. Tonight at 11.15, only on Channel 4. Check it out. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today. Mm. This is dull. Doesn't have to be. The starting lineup. Whoa. That crew from Texas, Billy Clyde Humphrey. And at Pride, a 5'6 debutante from Alabama, Nell Peterson. The Humphrey wedding brought to you by Miller Lite when you've got the great taste of an ice Let's face it, fire's the only way to cook a burger. It's true. Like you're stranded on a desert island. What do you want with you? A frying pan or a hibachi? You gotta go hibachi. It's no contest. The great tasting flame broiled whopper, just $2.99 with fries and a drink at Burger King. Welcome back to Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium where the crowd is alive, the anticipation growing for Game 2 of this World Series where both of tonight's starting pitchers pitching in their sixth World Series. But their experiences have been decidedly different. Atlanta's Tom Glavin has known personal success with a couple of World Series victories. However, his team has not won a title. As for Dennis Martinez, he has a World Series ring from the Baltimore Orioles in 1983. However, Martinez did not throw a single pitch in that World Series. So tonight, for both pitchers, a chance to take care of maybe some unfinished business. And Dennis Martinez started that process on Tuesday night when he pitched the Indians into this World Series. I didn't know how to celebrate because I've never been in that situation before, but it was a great feeling to know that finally I overcome something. First of all, myself, uh, first one in the fourth season, secondly, uh, get a chance to bring the World Series to Cleveland with people, you know, they've been waiting for a long time. Dennis Martinez had been waiting for a long time. At age 40, finally, his first postseason victory. As a young man pitching for the Orioles in 1979, he got hit hard in the World Series, alcohol abuse. Placing his life and career on the verge of ruin made him the forgotten man in 83. In 1983, I was uh, mentally uh, in bad shape. Physically, I was great, but uh, uh, mentally, I was uh, definitely like a waste. Uh, that was the one that had my drinking problem, but uh, uh, 
now I'm really living what this is all about, uh, even though I'm my age, but I still I'm young. Atlanta's Tom Glavin has suffered a different kind of postseason pain, a short, bittersweet history. The ace of his staff, he pitched well, but could not lead his team to a title. That thrill of winning is a heck of a lot better feeling. Uh, you know, there was, there was such a shallow feeling in 91 when you watched that ball go out to left field and we knew we were going to lose the game. Uh, it's almost like, you know, we've come so far uh, and here we are losing. What was the point of getting here? Tonight for Tom Glavin, another chance to bring the Braves one game closer to a championship. And for Dennis Martinez, another chance to fully enjoy this most precious of opportunities. If you're a fan of the game and you're just a fan of people, you have to, you have to like what Dennis Martinez has done. Um, like you say, he's come back from a lot of personal problems that uh, he worked real hard to get himself back. Uh, and to his credit, not only did he go, do what he had to do to get back, but he stayed where he's had to be in order to maintain himself once he's been here. And, uh, you know, you have to tip your hat to a guy like that. I'm sober, I'm clean, and I'm um, physically and, 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 and mentally great. Spiritually, I'm in great shape, too. So, you know, everything is great to know what is going on around me. So I'm enjoying it the most that I can, and uh, I'm, I'm having a ball. I feel like a little kid now. So even though I'm not, but, you know, I feel that way. Dennis Martinez of the Cleveland Indians, Tom Glavin of the Atlanta Braves. Game two of the World Series. We are just minutes away from the first pitch. We will rejoin Bob Costas along with Bob Uecker and Joe Morgan and Trisha Yearwood with our national anthem right after this. Give any here reviewing Subway Steak and Cheese Sandwich at the home of the Steak and Cheese Philadelphia. Steak and cheese, please. So what do we think? This is the real McCoy. Tender, juicy steak with loads of real melted cheese. We have a winner. Subway, what a sandwich. It is where the lofty atmosphere of most luxury cars is left behind. It is the American-built flagship of Toyota, Avalon. Combining refined performance, comfort, and Toyota's unparalleled reputation for quality, Avalon delivers the greatest luxury of all, peace of mind. Avalon, experience the tranquility. This 1995 World Series game is brought to you by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. And Goodyear, number one in tires. Down on the field, time for the national anthem. Prior to game number two, it'll be sung by Trisha Yearwood. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the colors which are being presented tonight by the U.S. Marine Corps Atlanta Color Guard. To honor America, please remain standing for the presentation of our national anthem, which will be performed tonight by Grammy award-winning MCA recording artist. Please welcome from Monticello, Georgia, Ms. Tricia Yearwood. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red was 
still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the We'll return to the 1995 World Series after this from your local stations. There's been an accident. It was the trial. Go to the wall. For the best highlights. Whoa! The best sports. The best seat in the house. Action. Go to the wall with Fred Rogan on Sunday Night Sports, tonight at 11.15, only on Channel 4. Check it out. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today. Mm. This is dull. Doesn't have to be. And now, the starting lineup. Whoa. That groom from Texas, Billy Clyde Humphrey. And at Pride, a 5'6 debutante from Alabama, Nell Peterson. The Humphrey Wedding brought to you by Miller Lite. When you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite, life is good. The vows are up. I do. I do. And they're good. Whoa, Nelly! That was beautiful, man. Cheers. Introducing the new Civic from Honda. More room, more refined, more luxury. The new Civic from Honda. Can France and Italy, Austria and England, Germany, Spain, and the Netherlands ever really agree on a single currency? Actually, they already have. Gold MasterCard. It's accepted at more cash machines around the world Excuse me, guys. than any other card. Look for your Gold MasterCard invitation in the mail and apply today. For the Southland's first news delivered to your doorstep, there's only one place to look. Good morning. This is Today in L.A. For the first word on the Southland's breaking news, most accurate weather forecast, and up-to-the-minute traffic reports, wake up to Today in L.A. at 5.30, 6, and 6.30. Start your day with the Southland's number one early morning news. And watch out for isolated showers. Save our streets. Tonight at 12.15 here on NBC4. Last night at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium for game one, an appropriate tip of the cap to baseball's present as Cal Ripken threw out the first ball. And now a nod toward baseball's pass, the glorious pass of the Milwaukee and Atlanta Braves. It's Henry Aaron who does the honors to a rousing ovation here. Back in the booth, Bob Costas joined now by Joe Morgan and Mr. Baseball, Bob Euchre. Joe, it was exactly 20 years ago tonight that you got the game-winning hit for the Cincinnati Reds at Fenway, Game 7 of the 1975 World Series. So a bit of history for you today. Tell us about Tom Glavin, Cy Young Award winner back in 91, the last National Leaguer to win it before Greg Maddox. Well, we saw how Greg Maddox could dismantle an offense last night. Well, if you're looking for a Greg Maddox clone, Tom Glavin comes closest. In fact, in the last five years, Tom Glavin has won one more ball game than Greg Maddox has in that same five-year period. He changes speeds very well, moves the ball around, and hitters always seem to underestimate his fastball. But the big factor, he is a proven winner, and he's left-handed. That'll help him against the Cleveland Indians. Now to Mr. Baseball <laughs> with Hank Aaron. Throwing out that first pitch, I'm reminded that as a former Brave teammate of his, you were often the first out of the dugout to shake his hand following a home run. Well, and a lot of people don't understand that. You had to be in great shape, Bob, because oh, I yeah. came all the way from the bullpen and right. <laughs> and to be first to grab Henry was something unbelievable. <laughs> Absolutely. What about Dennis Martinez? We've seen him several times in this postseason, you and I. Well, a 40-year-old right-hander, and the Braves are going to see a lot of sinking fastballs tonight. Good slider, cut fastball. 
a curve, and he's not ashamed to come high and tight. The big question with Martinez, pitching tonight on four days rest instead of the full week, which helped him to be so effective in game six at Seattle. And now here is tonight's Budweiser Cleveland Indians starting lineup. Kenny Lofton, who scored both of their runs last night with some base running exploits and some ninth inning maneuvers that raised eyebrows. Omar Vizquel is the shortstop. Carlos Baerga playing with the cast, the inflatable cast, on his left ankle, which he sprained in his final at bat of the ninth last night against Maddox. Albert Bell, the 50 home run cleanup man. Eddie Murray is at first base, not DH, has to play the field in the National League Park. Ramirez in right, Tomey at third. Pena will catch. He's caught most of Martinez's games this year, and Martinez grabs a bat for the first time in a few years. Of course, he did hit some when he was in the National League with the Expos. Glavin was 16 and seven this year. His ERA 3.08. A three-time 20-game winner. Flash bulbs popping all around the ballpark on the first pitch. Lofton hitting 341 overall in the postseason. Hit 310 for the regular year. And it's down low. 2 and up. The plate up is Jim McKean from the American League, Bruce Freming of the National League at first, Hirschbeck of the American League at second, Frank Pulley, National League at third, Joe Brinkman, American League left field line, Harry Wendelstadt of the National League, the plate umpire last night, is in right. Lofton, anxious to get on board, makes Glavin throw a strike. Chipper Jones in close at third base. And a chopper. They'll have to hurry with Lofton running. Belliard grabs it and unloads in time for the out. Joe, he puts such pressure on the defense, though. You have to hurry everything. Well, speed will cause you to make mistakes. Belliard, a fine defensive shortstop, gets rid of the ball very quickly. But we also saw how hard this infield is, and that high chopper was almost a base hit for Lofton. They got a place like this in Indianapolis called a brickyard. <laughs> You're right. Vizquel, a switch hitter, takes outside. Only four for 39 in the postseason. Look at that, 103. Hit 266 for the regular year. On the corner. Harry Wendelstadt appeared to give the edges to both Hershiser and to Maddox last night. We'll be watching closely to see how Jim McKean of the American League calls him. Here's the 1-1. Fouled out of play. You mentioned this infield, Uke. It is really rock hard and a lot of inconsistencies. There are some tough hops here. It's tough for both clubs, but obviously more difficult for the visitors. You know, this this ballpark, and, and I think Joe would attest to that too, we have both played here, and uh, it has been that way since they built this place. I mean, it's always been hard, the dirt portion. Chipper Jones, a new position, third base, 25 errors during the regular season. Easy chance there. And as a matter of fact, the outfield the same way. I mean, uh, if, you, if you talk to the players about this place, they, they associate it with artificial surface. I mean, it is that hard. And as we were talking before the game, the infield is almost like birdseed. I mean, with pebbles, little pebbles on the infield. And there's a lot of bad hops, and it's very quick. Now by Erica. Questionable up until game time. Had he been unable to go, they would have moved Ramirez up to the number three slot and played Alvaro Espinosa at second base. Outside of ball. You know, he told me before the game, Bob, he didn't think the ankle was going to be a problem hitting from the right side. But as Joe and I were talking a little bit earlier, in the field may be a problem for him. Fastball high and away. Glavin pitched well in one start in the division series at LCS against Colorado and the Reds. No decisions though. He's two and two lifetime in the World Series. Split two decisions against the Twins in 91. Did the same against the Blue Jays a year later. Out of play. For the last five years running. 
left handed hitters have hit for a much higher average against Glavin than right handed hitters. It's an oddity which we'll ask Joe to explain in just a moment. Or maybe in the next inning because this should end the first. Belliard got an easy hop. And the Indians are gone in order. Braves coming up when we come back. If you were to take every honor, every award, everything positive that's been said about the Toyota Camry and lay them end to end, you'd probably ask yourself, why did I do that? Better to drive one yourself and come up with a few accolades of your own. The 1996 Camry, the gold standard from Toyota. on traditions but to the men who give their best every day we give our best Gillette Sensor XL spring mounted twin blades that adjust to your face and soft flexible micro fins that set up your beard and Gillette series shaving gel for incredible smoothness Sensor XL for the closest most comfortable shave ever Gillette the best a man can get Looking for any signs of distress here, Joe, but Bayerga gets out of the box pretty well. Well, he's running pretty well down the line. He's not that quick anyway, but you can see he's not limping. Striding down the line. That's normal Bayerga gait. He will have problems in the field, I believe. That's where his problems will crop up. And that brings us to tonight's Budweiser Braves starting lineup. The change is behind the plate. With Lopez in and O'Brien out, Grissom, Lemke, Jones, the first three, the top of this order, had the lowest on-base percentage of any team in the National League, really not setting the table all year long for McGriff and Justice. Klesko behind them hit 23 home runs. Lopez, who's played very well in postseason. Belliard, the weak-hitting shortstop, they almost have to pinch hit for him late in the game unless a squeeze situation comes up like it did in the seventh last night. And Glavin, who is not a bad-hitting pitcher, he hit 222 for the year. Dennis Martinez at 40 has become the oldest pitcher to win a postseason game of any kind when he won game six in Seattle to wrap up the American League pennant. He could become the oldest ever to win a World Series game. At this point that distinction is held by early win who was 39 years old when he pitched a shutout in game one of the 1959 World Series for the White Sox against the Dodgers as always El Presidente the first native of Nicaragua ever to play in the major leagues takes a moment of reflection before the first pitch. He prefers the warmer weather. Difficulty with his knee contemplating off season surgery the elbow and then the shoulder went tender on him late in the season. They avoided the cold weather of Cleveland by holding him back for game six in Seattle and tonight it comes up 65 degrees for him. Grissom steps in and a check swing foul. He has hit safely in all nine postseason games the Braves have played including one of their three base hits last night. Fastball in on him. Shallow right field and a tough chance for Ramirez toward the line. He makes the catch and it would have been a fair ball. This 1995 World Series game is brought to you by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. United Artists Golden Eye Bond is back this November. And Budweiser, official sponsor of the 1996 U.S. Olympic team and the Centennial Olympic Games. Speaking of the Olympic Games, I think it's fair to say that there has not been to this point the kind of postseason World Series frenzy here in Atlanta that we saw in 91 and 92. After all, this is their fourth 
postseason appearance since 91. This is a town that has hosted a Super Bowl. They're gearing up for the biggest thing internationally in sports, the Olympics next year. And maybe this place won't really rock until we come back here, if we do, for games six and seven next weekend. They'll be roaring from the first pitch on Tuesday night for game three at Jacobs Field in Cleveland because the experience will be so fresh for them. Two and out Lemke, who hit 253 for the year. Remember, he had a huge World Series against the Twins in 91. One for three last night. Taking all the way, 3-0. Well, three times now, Martinez has missed high with those little sinking fastballs that aren't sinking here on Lemke. You know, Bob, as we watched him work in uh, Game 6 in Seattle, when they removed him from that game, and we had that shot of him on the bench grimacing in pain and moving his arm and his shoulder, I didn't think he was going to be able to work the rest of the year. But here he is tonight in Game 2. And he walks Lemke on four pitches. Martinez, like every starter we've seen so far, Maddox especially, but also Hershiser and Glavin, is a control artist, averages only around two walks for a full game. That was the amazing thing about Maddox last night, Joe, the fact that, I mean, a couple of times he went to ball three counts, but I could not believe watching that guy work, how consistent he was inside, outside, wherever he wanted to throw. Well, he's the best I've ever seen with his control. Eddie Murray holding Lemke. And a strike to Chipper Jones. The one thing you'll see from Martinez, he will never give in to the hitter. Even though he walked Lemke, he starts Chipper Jones off with a breaking ball. He will pitch the middle of this lineup tough no matter what the situation is. Martinez was 12 and 5 for the regular year. ERA barely over 3. In fact, his ERA and Glavin's identical at 3.08. You might say it's a greater achievement, though, for Martinez in a DH league. And there are generally better hitters' parks in the American League than in the National. Jones with a drive to deep right. Ramirez turns. Ramirez to the fence and has to play it on a bounce. Lemke speeds for third. Jimmy Williams holds him up there on a double by Chipper Jones. That went out there like a laser beam, Joe. And in fact, they had a shot at Chipper Jones at second base, but Bayerga cut the ball. He wasn't aware that they still had a chance to get Chipper Jones at second base. I'm wondering, Joe, if Ramirez may have had a chance to catch that ball. He looked like he may have given up on it too quickly. Well, you're Assuming right. that the ball was going to get off the wall, this ball short hopped the wall. It was a high pitch, and Jones gets it all here. And the ball short up the wall. I thought Ramirez gave up on it maybe a little too quickly. On that same kind of pitch from Hershiser, only it was a first pitch fastball last night, McGriff launched a rocket into the seats well beyond the right field fence. Breaking ball down and in for ball one. And one thing to remember, Bob, the Atlanta Braves hitters had one week off and they felt like they were a little stale in last night's ball game, not taking nothing away from Hershiser, but they feel like they are better prepared today because they have seen some breaking balls. Tapped in front of the plate, Martinez looks at Lemke and now goes to first after Lemke headed back. And in fact, had they thrown behind him, they would have had him in a rundown, but Jones would have moved up, and if he stayed in the rundown long enough, McGriff would have taken second. So once Martinez was sure that Lempe wasn't going to score, he took the easy play at first. Absolutely. Take the sure out, and they may have had a shot at Lempke at third, Joe, especially after he took about three or four extra steps in trying to induce Martinez to come that way. They may have had a shot at him then, but he takes the runner, the batter, the guy at first, and you get the sure out. Yeah, that's the proper play. Take the out at first base. If he throws to third base and they even pick him off, they're going to get in a rundown, and you may end up in the same situation. Take the out and let them work from there. First base open, but Klesko, who hit 310, is on deck. Justice didn't have a big year for him, just 253. But he hit Martinez well when Dennis was in the National League. Over 300 lifetime. 
A called strike, good location. Now that's what you're going to see from Martinez. He's got the cutter and the sinker, and that looked that looked like a four-seam fastball that time, right on the inside corner. Little Taylor, about knee high, and a strike. A ball and a strike now. Let's not forget one thing. That was a great pitch he threw to McGriff to get out of the trouble that he was in for the moment. He threw him a change up that looked like a fastball. He had great arm speed. Looked like a fastball. McGriff topped it right back to him. And he's capable of making great pitches under pressure. That's what separates the good pitchers from the average pitchers. Every time you think you, you got this guy exactly. timed, he pulls one back on you again. Puts a little more on, takes something off. Now the 1-1. One -one. Perfect pitch. You saw Pena slide outside. There was no way Justice could pull that ball, put it exactly where he wanted it. I love watching Pena work with Martinez. Here it is again on the outside corner, and just on the outside corner. Jimmy McKeon liked it, but I love watching Pena work with this guy. And throughout this game, you'll watch Tony Pena, you'll see him check hitters, look up at hitters, and see where they're trying to watch, see if they're trying to pick him up sitting inside or outside. And he spoils the one two pitch. Again making him reach for it. But I think one of the reasons Justice has hit well against Martinez is he feels that he sees the ball well and Justice is also capable of going the other way. Justice will hit a line drive to left field if Martinez stays out away from him. Lemke who walked with one out is at third. Chipper Jones who followed with a double is at second. Two down no score bottom of the first and a one two pitch coming to David Justice. Fans reacting to a good catch made by somebody in pursuit of a souvenir. Actually, somebody up at the press box level. John Denver. <laughs> Again on one and two. Off the outside edge. Justice has six. Postseason home runs, none this year. Joe, he just doesn't give in, does he? No, he I doesn't. Mean, talk about Maddox and all these other guys. I mean, this guy has been around forever, and you've hit against him and watched him, and he just does not give in. I mean, he's going to try and get you to chase pitches down low and away, drop a low inside curve on you, slider. <laughs> and now he goes full to justice. And if he's going to throw a strike, you it will be a perfect strike. I mean, it's almost comical to watch this guy work. I mean, you, you do, you don't enjoy it as a hitter. I mean, if the umpire is pulling back on you on those outside pitches, Joe, but as a, as a broadcaster, as a spectator, you gotta love watching this guy work. I mean, he just he just doesn't give in to you. Payoff pitch. Breaking ball low and Klesko will bat with the bases loaded. After trying to run several fastballs toward the outside edge, looked like he went curveball that time, Joe. Well, he had thrown three pitches away. He had to come inside. He chose to come in with the breaking ball. You can see the hole right there in that breaking ball, the spin. That's how you recognize the curveball. The rotation a lot allows you to see it because there's a hole in it. Bases loaded, two out. And Klesko.
He threw him the change on the first pitch. Yeah, he had Klesko way out in front. And again, staying with the sinking fastballs on Justice, flips him a 3-2 curve, he misses, and then starts this kid off with a change of pace. Upstairs. A ball and a strike. Here's the way one scouting report read a few years ago on Ryan Klesko. In a few years, this kid could be hitting 30 home runs or driving a truck. <laughs> Looks like the Teamsters will have to wait. 310 with 23 homers. Stepping off and looking the runners back. Martinez taking all the time in the world in a first inning jam. And the 1-1. One, one. Good breaking ball. He was nowhere near it. One and two. Well, the scouting report on Klesko has to be off-speed pitches, a lot of change-ups. He will chase the change-up because it looks like a fastball and then throw him a lot of breaking balls. This one is just a poor swing. This ball never started in the strike zone. And it's a great play by Tony Pena to save a run. I mean, look how he shifts out there and he makes the catch. Great stop there by Pena. That saves a run. Absolutely, Joe. Nice play on a breaking ball. So he's got Klesko one and two, as he did justice before walking him. And the count evens. If the Braves should lose Fred McGriff to free agency, it's likely that Klesko will come in from left field and play first base. I, I just uh, I don't see how this club can't sign him though. I, I've, I've always liked McGriff. I've always thought he's been a good first baseman. Got power. He's going to hit for average for you. Good guy at a ball club too. The 2-2. Two -two. Two -two. And one thing to remember this was not a real good ball club until Freddie McGriff came over in 93 and they went 53 and 17 after he arrived but more than just the bat that he brings he brings a certain personality a calming personality to the young players and he keeps the veterans on their toes he is a leader as well as being a good RBI man and a good home run hitter remember that bolt he hit in the all star game a couple of years ago in Pittsburgh off Lee Smith wow another 2 2 pitch Ground ball foul. I say last year, two years ago, last year. You know, with all the strikes and the other nonsense, it's hard to keep track. It is, you're right. There's the crime dog. There he is, yep. A lot of clubs will bid his price up once this season is over. That's part of the Braves' success. The farm system is so deep, they can replace departing players, and they can trade prospects for veterans when they need them. Another 2-2 pitch. And a high pop-up, and I mean a mile high, but when it comes down, the Indians should be out of the inning. Tommy has it in fair ground. The Braves leave the bases loaded. No score after a long first. It has dominated the field. And now Toyota's newest 4x4, Tacoma, has arrived. Only it's stronger. Tacoma's impressively powerful new 190-horsepower V6 outguns the leading competitor's best. It's tougher out here where toughness counts. And with its class-leading ground clearance, Tacoma runs free. Toyota Tacoma, the arrival of the fittest. dollar a day you can get the best television has to offer with prime star 
movies, sports, and family programming, all with digital picture and sound. Best of all, Prime Star is a service, so there's no equipment to buy. And it all starts at about a dollar a day. To find out more, call 1-800-PRIME-STAR. NBC Friday. See for yourself why the critics are fired up about homicide. It's TV's best cop show. It's brilliant drama. Compelling television. Sizzling. Homicide is the real thing. The conclusion of City of Flames on Homicide, NBC Friday. Throw the usual percentages and managing by the book out when you talk about Glavin. Right-handers hit 229 against him this year. Lefties 321, and it's been roughly that way for five straight years. Why, Joe? Well, the main reason is because he stands to the third base side of the rubber to get a better angle on the right-handed hitters. His fastball tails away, and his changeup will move away. And, but that hurts him against left-handed hitters because he can't get the angle for the curveball. See how he stands way over toward third base. That's a great angle for his sinking fastball away from the right-hander and the changeup away. But again, it hurts him because he can't start the breaking ball at the left-handed hitters. Albert Bell a terror with 50 regular season home runs and a batting average of 317 in the postseason. Very tame until now. 219, two homers, four RBIs. Led the American League in homers, slugging percentage, runs, total bases, extra base hits. Tied Mo Vaughn for the RBI lead and Edgar Martinez for the lead in doubles. That's out of play. He hit a ball well to right field last night after seeing enough stuff away from Maddox. And, and Greg just staying outside corner, outside corner, or just off against Bell. And Albert finally hit a ball deep to right. But I mean Maddox again last night Joe with with every Indians hitter but especially with this guy and there you see Greg Maddox that's about how he looked last night when he was pitching too. I don't did he sweat last night at all. Look at him. I didn't see it looks a little bit like Clark Kent doesn't mm -hmm. <laughs> or Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Glavin works one and one to Bell. You wonder sometimes if a guy like that showers after the game I mean you know. No sweat, no perspiration. Easy game, nice job. Walks in the clubhouse, see you guys tomorrow. Get in your car with your uniform on and head home. And the 2 1 pitch. Sounded like a broken bat, but it finds the hole for a leadoff single. Well, Glavin got a change up away, which is the way they're going to pitch to Bell. Change ups away, a few fastballs off the plate in. This one is away, hits it off the end of the bat, but he finds a hole on the right side. But Glavin is not too unhappy with that. Now watch, change up away, right off the end of the bat, and you can see Bell had really opened up. Not a lot that he could do with that pitch other than what he did. Now Murray, who played only 18 games at first base, for Cleveland. Once a terrific fielder as well as hitter. And a drive on the first pitch that may leave the yard. Chasing it into the corner is Klesko and it's gone. Forget about the glove work. He can still hit. Well, he had been 0 for 11 from the right side in postseason play, but he can always hammer that high fastball. Glavin makes a mistake, and Eddie Murray makes him play, pay for it. High fastball. Now, that one didn't ride, Joe. It didn't ride away from Murray. Here it is one more time. As you said, high hanging fastball, and when he hit it, he knew he got it all. Right on the fat part. Plesko to the wall. Adios. So after the Braves leave the bases loaded in the bottom of the first, the Indians immediately strike for two in the top of the second. Glavin seldom allowed a home run during the regular year in 200 innings of work, only nine. But he did struggle a lot in the early innings. He gave up most of his runs early in the ball game. But I think this was very important for the Indians to show the Braves that they can score. 
that they can put some numbers on the board. Ramirez who had 31 homers of his own during the regular season. Two and one. Well, as they did against Seattle. Losing game one. Coming back. Lose the opener in Cleveland. Come back and then sweep from there. I mean this club can score runs and, and score them in a hurry. Only Greg Maddox allowed fewer home runs in the National League this year. He gave up eight. Glavin nine. The Indians have been shut out only three times all year. Never held to as few as two hits. Until Maddox shut them down last night. When you watch Glavin and Maddox you're watching two clones almost. The only difference between the two is that Maddox in the entire ball game last night never got a fastball up that high. Glavin doesn't have quite the control that Maddox has but he's very close. Full count to Ramirez. He reaches for it and rolls it to Jones who charges and throws him out. Well Tom Glavin is three and six overall in terms of postseason decisions two and two in World Series play and he has been at least to date a different pitcher outside the regular season in 74 innings of postseason work he's allowed now 11 home runs so he's made a lot more mistakes in these big games ordinarily Espinosa would start at third against a left hander for the Indians but considering that the lefties hit Glavin better Tommy stays in the lineup tonight for Mike Hargrove. Now the other thing with with left handers against Glavin Joe the fact that he's got that rider that will bust away from a right hander but it's right into the left handers power. Well and if he doesn't really get it inside it's a it's a good ball to hit. And not only that a lot of left handed pitchers do not like to throw left handed hitters change ups and change ups. And the changeup is one of Glavin's best pitches. I think he will throw Tommy some changeups and try to keep them away. One out, nobody on. Two runs home in the second, and one and two to Tommy. It's amazing in this series thus far, and it's it's early, but how many Indians hitters, Joe, continually are trying to pull the ball? against Glavin tonight and Maddox last night despite the fact that they're being pitched away I know you're I know you're saying to yourself wait back and go the other way but when they change speed so often against you it's tough to lay back that's true misses two and two Mike Hargrove said he had one regret about last night's game wished that he had pitched out on the first pitch to Raphael Belliard. A lot of people were anticipating the squeeze. Bobby Cox said he decided to put it on when he ran out to second base to argue. A bouncing ball toward Lemke. Easy play for him. He made only five errors all year long and might win his first gold glove. Anyway Cox said when he ran out to argue the play where Vizquel appeared to juggle the ball trying to get the force at second and Bruce Fremming called the runner out anyway as he was running out there he's thinking well Belliard's up next we got a man at third we're going to put the squeeze on here and Hargrove wasn't 100 percent sure and with the bases loaded I guess he didn't want to run the risk of having his pitcher fall behind with the first pitch pitch out. Well but I think also one of the problems is that Hargrove has managed in the American League his entire life with the designated hitter. He is not accustomed to making those types of decisions with eighth place hitters up there. They do not put a squeeze on very often in the American League because they have DHs. Let me correct myself. First and third after the force mm -hmm. play, not bases loaded in that situation in the seventh. Go ahead, you. Wasn't it funny when, when Bobby Cox told us, he said, when I put it on, I say to myself, hey, if he pitches out, we're dead anyway, but I'm going to take a flyer. Pena taking a little stroll to gather himself behind in the count 0 and 2. In the air center field Grissom. Three straight outs after a single by Bell and Murray's two run homer. And the Indians have the lead.
There's a fine line of motor oil separating your car's engine parts that's as little as a thousandth of an inch. But friction and heat can make motor oil become volatile and vaporize, weakening its ability to protect expensive parts. Texaco Haviland Formula 3 is formulated to control volatility, fight vaporization, and provide complete engine protection, no matter what you drive. Add more life to your car. Take it to the stars. Welcome, Dave. It's been a long time. It sure has, Red. You've got a spicy chicken sandwich. But here, try this. Not bad. Water? No, thanks. Ooh. Now try a Wendy's spicy chicken. Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich is a whole breast fillet seasoned with Dave's own blend of pepper and spices. It's one very delicious, very spicy sandwich. Please. <laughs> try Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich and long live the king. Be sure to get your shot with a Canon Sure Shot, like the new Sure Shot Z70W. Quite a chic little zoom. Who doesn't get excited about the World Series? Jim Gray was anxious to get to the ballpark. In fact, he came out early. Wow, I really got to thank my good friend Bob Uecker. Came through with two great seats here, uh, even in the front row. But uh, wait a second here, you, uh, you've given me tickets to, uh, to a place where they're not going to be playing for another year and a half. I guess that's, uh, that's why you gave them to me, but we're over here at the Olympic Stadium. It's going to be completed in about 103 days from now. It'll seat for the Olympics 85,000 people. Then for the 1997 season, the Braves will move in here and it'll be reconfigured and chopped down to about 49,000. So Yuke, I can tell you had a great pull for tickets for me tonight. Uh, so I'm counting on two from you for the opening ceremonies. <laughs> oh, the zany hijinks. I, you know, I, I don't get around a lot, okay? Oh, no? No. No. To me, it looked like he was in the second row. I mean, I could be <laughs> wrong, you know? I know Jim's fired up for this this week in Atlanta, and uh, he's back home. And What a place that is next door, though. Wow. And then when they reconfigure it, It'll be one of those new old parks, mm -hmm. like Jacobs Field in Cleveland, like Coors Field in Denver, like Camden Yards in Baltimore. This one is bye-bye, following the Olympics. This is where your career ended, isn't it, Uke? Yeah, as a matter of fact, you know, when we were in Bobby Cox's office today, that was the second time I was ever in the manager's <laughs> office here in Atlanta. The first time was when Lumen Harris told me I was out of here. <laughs> matter of fact, I went in to ask him, and he said, get out. <laughs> Well, no point beating around the bush. Nah. They get right to the point. <laughs> Lopez on the first pitch bounces one fair. Tommy behind the bag, and Murray stays on the bag at the other side of the diamond for the first out. We saw those shots of Fulton County Stadium and the new Olympic Stadium, a work in progress from on high. It's the Goodyear Blimps Stars and Stripes from Pompano Beach, Florida. This is the 30th World Series Goodyear Blimps have televised. The pilot is Captain Larry Chambers. That was nice coming back in here and, and getting a chance to, to get back into the clubhouse, Joe, uh, where I was a long time ago. You, of course, here in the visitor's clubhouse many times, but uh, still a lot of uh, old friends here and uh, and people who saw me play and were upset. <laughs> Belliard <laughs> lofts one down the right field line and Ramirez on the run with a nice play in the bullpen area. In foul ground, Ramirez is not known as an especially good outfielder, but a fine running catch there. Well, he ran a long way for that ball. It almost popped out. It looked like at the last moment, right when he caught it, that he was going to lose it. A little ice cream cone there, but he hangs on. <laughs> Double clutch, he grabs it, and a nice running play by Ramirez. Tell you what, they talk about this guy not being all that great in the outfield, and he's getting better and better because from time to time, Hargrove uses Kirby in the late innings when the Indians are in front. But this guy can throw, and as Hargrove has told us on numerous occasions, he's getting better and better all the time. Two quick outs. Here's Glavin. He hit 222, had eight RBIs, and hit his first major league home run in August in this ballpark against the Reds. We're in the bottom of the second. 
Eddie Murray's homer following an Albert Bell single in the top half of this inning has given the Indians a 2-0 lead. Braves had second and third with one out. Bases loaded with nobody out in the first against Martinez and couldn't score. Off-speed pitch cut on and missed. Martinez really had to work in the first. He threw 25 pitches. Ahead of Glavin now one and two is on the verge of making very quick work of Atlanta in the second. And he does. That's his first strikeout. A perfect second inning. Still 2-0 Cleveland. It is where the lofty atmosphere of most luxury cars is left behind. It is the American-built flagship of Toyota, Avalon. Combining refined performance, comfort, and Toyota's unparalleled reputation for quality, Avalon delivers the greatest luxury of all, peace of mind. Avalon, experience the tranquility. There's this college team I practice with to stay in shape. Each one is out to prove that they can hit the Ryan Express. I'm out to prove they can't. After a day of fastballs, it's Advil for me. Nothing has shown me that it works better or lasts longer than Advil. For sore muscles, more doctors recommend Advil than any other pain reliever. I love that sound. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. For years, people have done their thinking on the run. Now, they can do their business on the run, thanks to the breakthrough that fits in your pocket. Zorus, the personal digital assistant from Sharp that gives you the freedom to write it, type it, sign it, and fax it anytime, anywhere. John, hello mate, just got your fax, but you really should get out of the office a bit more. I've been working on some new off-speed pitches lately. This one I call the crazy ball. It goes between 97 and 98 miles an hour. It tails into left-handers. <laughs> what was that? This one I call Mr. Snappy. Mr. Snappy has a mind of his own. A lot of guys, they don't like Mr. Snappy. That's gotta hurt. You know, I, I may be getting old, but I just swear that pitch came off the back of Johnson's hand. I'm still working on a lot of these. Back in Atlanta, the Indians trying to get even before an off day tomorrow and then game three Tuesday night at sparkling new Jacobs Field. Check the football scores wild one at Soldier Field and the Bears win it. The new St. Louis Rams with their comeuppance at this point they had been five and one San Francisco tying them atop the NFC West and pasting them in the process without Steve Young Jets squeaking by Miami. Where did that come from? Atlanta over Tampa Bay. Here's Martinez stepping in. He was a 143 hitter in his years with the Montreal Expos. <laughs> what do you think he just said, Joe? Feels a little strange <laughs> looking at that first one. Look at this. Carolina's won a couple of games in their maiden season. Kansas City winning in the snow at Denver. Oakland over Indy. Sounds right to say Oakland Raiders again. It does. San Diego beats Seattle. Bruce Freming involved in the controversy at second base last night, and the replay showed that he missed the call. They check with him on this one to see if Martinez committed himself, and he says yes, he did. Yeah, that was a good call by Bruce Freming that time. Martinez now as a hitter didn't think he went. All Fremming said last night was I had it right. I had it right. And he and his colleagues usually do. Mm -hmm. Last night he didn't. <laughs> yeah, he was uh, he was a little off last night. Huh? No big deal. <laughs> the 2-2 two -two pitch. Line drive caught by McGriff. Well, you have to give El Presidente a pat on the back because he fought hard on this, and he finally it's a line drive down the right field line, but McGriff had him played perfectly. Since 1986, 
when Peter Uberoth changed things a little bit during his stint as commissioner. They've been using the DH in the American League Park in the World Series and no DH in the National League Park. Under those rules, National League pitchers have hit 167. American leaguers before that Martinez at bat have hit 100. On the other hand, American League DHs in their parks have hit 256. The National League's DHs, this is kind of surprising because you should just pull a good bat off the bench, just 195. Yeah, but you have to remember, being a DH is like pinch hitting, and that's the most difficult job to do. People who are accustomed to DHing, you know, have a rhythm. They know how to prepare themselves. Lofton grounded out his first time. A bullet, but Lemke has it. So they keep Lofton off the bases. A couple of steals and scored a run in the first. No one in the park knew what he was thinking in the ninth when they were down two and he tried to go from first to third on a ground out. He not only made it, but forced McGriff into a wild throw, but it was a strange choice by Kenny. <laughs> he did score the run. He was fired up about it and fired up today yet. But uh, that was a tough play. And uh, it could have been a very embarrassing play for Kenny Lofton. I really think he helped Greg Maddox in that situation. He took him out of the stretch where he could go to the windup, and all he had to do was keep the ball in the ballpark. And he threw all changeups away to Bayerga. So I really think that worked to hit the Cleveland's disadvantage. If he would have stayed at second, Greg Maddox would have had to stay in the stretch. You know, it's almost tough to tell a guy like that, Joe, who's so aggressive. I mean, he's like that all the time. Uh, you know, to kind of pull back on yourself a little bit. Scale slices one foul. Boy, what a job he did in that playoff series against uh, Randy Johnson, didn't he, Bob? I mean, and Joe, you saw it. I mean, I don't, I don't care who you are as a left-handed batter. That guy is intimidating. And Lofton hung in there on breaking balls, and when when he'd get the high fastball, I mean, he'd rifle a bullet to left. And he broke the backs of the Mariners with that scamper from second base on the pass ball. And taking nothing away from the Bulldog Hirschheiser's performance in that series I still think Lofton was the most valuable player personally. Well when he scored from second in the seventh inning it was three nothing but the game and the series were over yes. and the voting was already done. Yeah you can right. <laughs> Hershiser had already won at that point but you could see the shoulders yeah. of the Mariners sag. Absolutely. After fighting so hard and so well for so long they were done after that play. Two and two to Vizquel. Yeah you wouldn't get any argument there Joe but I, I think everything had been done already. And uh, as you look at Oral Hershiser, last night's loser in a very tough outing. First postseason loss ever. Now seven and one. The scale pops one in foul ground. Chipper Jones going back. It's a tough chance. He's into the bullpen to make the catch. All kinds of foul ground in this ballpark. You saw it with Ramirez earlier. Jones here. Indians out in order. You can still depend on one man. On November 17th, United Artists brings you the return of James Bond. You were expecting someone else? Friday, November 17th. It's been said that everyone will be famous for 15 minutes.
For some, that's just their daily commute. The Lexus Coupe. It's NBC Special Comedy Wednesday. On an all-new brotherly love, Joey boldly goes to a Trekkie convention and meets Sulu. Oh. Then it's a special Hope and Gloria. Ta -da! And a super special Mad About You with Garth Brooks. Followed by an all-new home court. NBC Special Comedy Wednesday. This was a great play by Chipper Jones. I mean, he made up his mind he was going to catch the ball. Normally, this ball is caught by the shortstop or the left fielder. But look, he goes all the way down in the bullpen. The ball never in his sight, always over his shoulder. And he makes a fine catch there in the bullpen. You play a full year in this park. All that foul ground is going to take some points off your average, isn't it? I would say that it takes at least 10 to 15 points off of every hitter's average here playing in a ballpark with this much foul territory. Grissom fly to right his first time up. And Martinez is outside with it. Last night, Tim McCarver said he felt that Marquise Grissom was the best defensive center fielder in all of baseball. He's certainly on the short list. I wonder if you guys agree that he's number one. Here's the pitch. You know, my statement would be that Darren Lewis in Cincinnati is very good, but it's like these two ball clubs. It depends on which one of these teams you've seen the most that you're most impressed with. And I think Darren Lewis and Marquise Grissom are probably the two best center fielders in the National League. Well, I've seen Lofton, and I think anybody who talks about center field would give you an argument, being a Cleveland fan and watching Lofton throughout the year. Um, and, and I think maybe you notice it more with the Indians club, Joe, because of Ramirez and Bell in right and left, who are not the fastest guys. And Lofton, Lofton has to cover a lot of ground, and he throws good. He throws a lot better than a lot of people think he does. He's got a very good arm, and he has excellent speed, as we said. There's Ramirez in right, and Bell flanks Lofton in left. What about Junior Griffey? Well, well I was talking about we, the American National League. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can talk about Griffey. I mean, he's probably in a class by himself. I mean, he's yes. he's a great all-around hitter and power and, and has a great throwing arm. I don't think he has the speed of a Lofton or a Grissom or, or a Lewis. Martinez came down sidearm. And this ball will drop out of play. Ramirez had no chance. This is what hitters moan and groan about. You know, Joe, as, as a catcher, when a guy hits a fly ball and you're running down the line to back him up or or take a throw behind the bag if, if these balls are hitting foul territory you can hear those hitters hollering and screaming and everything else in this ballpark the other one is the Oakland Coliseum another one with a tremendous amount of foul territory another one two pitch to Grissom fastball tried to run it in on him and just missed two and two you know Tim's point and a good one about Grissom is how shallow he plays reminiscent of Paul Blair for so many years in the American League and yet he will turn and go hard to the wall. I mean really he doesn't shy away from the wall. He made a running catch in game three of the LCS off Jeff Branson that if it were made in the World Series would probably be on the all time highlight reel. Did it get him. Yep he's on his way to first. The fans booing and in fact as you mentioned you Martinez does pitch inside a lot he hit 12 men this year but it is obviously not his intention to hit Grissom as the leadoff man. No you're right and I think this is a sidearm fastball and you can see it you can see that spin on that ball sinking inside. I don't think he wanted to come in this tight for sure I mean to get in tight fine but that one nailed Grissom and again Martinez will do it all night long I mean he's he's not intimidated by the fact that he hits a hitter or hits a batter once in a while he'll still come in there but uh, not with that guy as you said Bob is a leadoff man. Lemke who drew a walk in the first. Grissom stole twenty nine to lead the Braves. Nobody else in double figures on this squad in terms of steals. Not going, and Lemke fouls one off. And Lemke swung at that like it was a hit and run, and then he looked down at Grissom at first base as if to say, "You missed a sign." Mm -hmm. That's what he's looking at right now. To Jimmy Williams, he said, "Hey, did it, did I miss one, yeah, well, or did he?" Well, you see, this pitch is way outside, and he's protecting Grissom, but Grissom was not running, and then. 
the next pitch Williams gave emphatic signs like hey you miss one watch me. That's what Bobby Cox is saying right there too. What's going on did he miss one. Not going again and a soft line drive in the center here comes left and it drops in front of him. Grissom wasn't sure he stops at second. Time runs aboard in the bottom of the third. That's one of those situations where you say I hit it like he threw it. It was a change up and he just flipped it out in the center field for a base hit. He went down on Hershiser's fastball last night and, and lined a bullet to center after Hershiser kept going away, away, away on him, Joe, when he finally had to come in there. And Lemke sitting right on it. Knee high fastball hit a bullet to center. Now Chipper Jones, who doubled his first time up. Two on, nobody out. And ball one. And because Chipper hit a high fastball his first time up, Martinez starts him off with a curveball here and he will probably try to get him with change ups and at least try to get the sinker down and away. Two and oh when you get a close up of Jones you can still see the effects of the fat lip during the workout. On Friday, a ball ricocheted off the wall and caught him right in the mouth. I asked him tonight. I said, "How's it? How's it feel?" He said, "Fine." I said, "It looks great." <laughs> you know, it adds to that old-time baseball feel that this kid has about him, wearing the pants yeah. high, the look of him. This is a situation where Bayerga's right ankle may come into play here, not being able to cover the ground on the right side. Sneaking in behind, and they throw it away. Martinez trying to pick Grissom off instead allows him to advance to third. Lemke holds first. Joe, this looks like a situation where Martinez may have thought that Bayerga was going to be the cover man. He threw that ball on the right side of the bag. On the right field side of second, not even close to Vizquel, who was the cover man. Look where that throw is. And even had it been Bayerga, it may have been wide for Bayerga to the right side, too. That's a play by Lemke, I was going to say, to stay at first, not taking a chance on getting thrown out at second by Lofton. Huge trouble for Martinez. Behind on the count, 2-0. Jones swings and drives one to left. Albert Bell will make the catch. Grissom tags and scores. Lemke retreats to first. And it's two to one. That is one of the reasons that a lot of people think Chipper Jones should be the rookie of the year in the National League. He drives in runs. He produces runs for this ball club. And this is a great situation here. So he goes the other way, doesn't try to pull a ball. He knows all he has to do to get the run in is hit a fly ball to left field. So he does that. Good hitting there. That's the sign of a good RBI man for the future. He's going to be a good one. McGriff was a big out for Martinez in the first. Got him on a comebacker with runners at second and third. This one deflects off Martinez's glove. Baerga throws on the run and got him. Had to come in and barehand it and score it 1 4 3. Well, he showed no ill effects of, from his right ankle there. Nice play by Baerga. He actually starts back up the middle because the ball was hit up the middle. Then he has to reverse his fields, and you have to put pressure on your right ankle to come back to your left. Does a good job, gets there, barehands it, and barely gets McGriff at first base. Good play. You know, I wonder if Martinez doesn't touch that ball, Joe, if Bayerga has a chance to start an inning ending double play with Vizquel. That ball was hit to the left of Martinez, and it looked like Bayerga may have had a chance to make the play on. We'll never know. Martinez still an excellent pitcher, but one thing that goes. When you get to age 40, your reflexes slow a little bit. He's been hit by three or four comebackers this year where he couldn't quite get the glove up, been hurt on a couple of them. And here he was a little slow to react. The ball he might have gloved was deflected instead. 
I think in the first couple of innings here Bob and Joe we've seen Martinez throw more high fastballs than he has over his last three or four starts. And I mean as long as they're in the area where he's throwing them off the outside or off the inside he's going to be all right there. But if he takes one high and around a hittable area somebody's going to stiff him. Two and out out of justice. Who doesn't have an extra base hit in this postseason and has just one RBI in nine Braves division LCS and World Series games to date. And you have he has hit well against Martinez in the past but. I think a lot of the injuries he had this year has really taken his toll on his production. Sore shoulder bad shoulders bad knees bad ankles. The 2 0 pitch is ripped to right Ramirez a late break it bounces in front of him Lemke being waved home. And the game is tied. The pitching coach Mark Wiley will go to the mound looked like a high fastball and at the crack of the bat Joe Ramirez froze. That's exactly right. It was a high fastball and he didn't get a good break on the ball. But if you take a look at the Atlanta Braves they are not a real good hitting ball club overall but they do produce runs and this is another way they produce runs. They get a lot of two out base hits. I don't know why Lemke was hesitating because there are two outs he should have been going with the crack of the bat but he hesitated at second base and Ramirez hesitated in the outfield so maybe neither one of them knew how many outs there were. Look at Lemke he's uh, he's upset. In last night's game Joe McGriff at third on that ball that was hit to Vizquel that was bobbled and McGriff actually went back to the bag thinking there you know the situation didn't know the situation eventually scored I mean had no problem scoring. They were going to give the run for the double play talking about the Indians but McGriff went back to the bag not knowing how many outs there were. Dennis Martinez again when he starts getting upstairs and in the hitting area look out. He breezed through the second but in the first and the third the pitches have really piled up. Remember a full week's rest and even then they pulled him after seven in Seattle when he clinched it in game six only four days rest for tonight's start. Last night Indians led one nothing couldn't hold it tonight two nothing and now it's tied two two. One and one to Klesko who figures to be the D.H. when we go to Cleveland and then Bobby Cox will have to make a choice Mike Devereaux is a right handed hitter Indians start all right handers but Devereaux was the LCS MVP and is a better defensive outfielder than Polonia or Smith. Couldn't check. One and two. So it'll be an interesting decision for Cox. Smith and Polonia. The left handed hitters. He could hold them both back. In anticipation of guys like Tavares and Mesa coming out of the bullpen late in the game. So he has good left handed pinch hitters available. Breaking ball tap foul. How about when we were in uh, Bobby Cox's office tonight and talking about his options and he asked us what would you guys do. <laughs> what you guys do I'll do what you guys want to do. That's what he said. <laughs> well, he, he's great. He really is. What a great guy to talk to. And to hold back anything. <laughs> Siegel obviously. Two and two. This for Cox is his fifth postseason. Four with the Braves, and then in 1985, a very good Toronto Blue Jay team had a 3-1 lead on Kansas City, the eventual world champions in the American League playoffs. And Kansas City won the fifth game at home and the sixth and seventh in Toronto and did the same thing against the Cardinals down 3 1 and came back to win the World Series although the last two were at home in that instance. Every batter in this inning has hit the ball hard even the outs off Martinez. 
full count to Klesko. If I'm Mike Hargrove, I start to worry about Martinez because the Braves are not chasing a lot of pitches now out of the strike zone. And if they make him come into the strike zone, he is going to get hit. No action yet in the pen. Murray will play behind Justice, who will be running on the 3-2 pitch. There he goes, and here it comes, and he struck him out. But the Braves tie the game, and we're back after this from your local station. Monday, the Fresh Prince and Carlton are trapped by a big, bad boyfriend. We're not really here! <laughs> Sorry. And in the house, Kim Wayans from In Living Color stalks Marion. And I shaved my mustache. In the house after Fresh Prince, NBC Monday. Cheers. Introducing the new Civic from Honda. More room. More refined. More luxury. The new Civic from Honda. Monday at 6 on the Channel 4 News, Selena. The murder trial enters its final phase. Channel 4 News legal expert Manuel Medrano live from the Houston courthouse as the closing arguments begin. Plus, breast cancer, the deadly disease that strikes millions of women. Now a simple step to help keep you safe. The secret may lie in what you eat. And your children in sports, now a choice more important than win or lose. Choosing the coach will help you make that decision Monday at 6. When you're in Los Angeles and you've got Miller Lite... Life is good. I can always use a cold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so many beaches, so little time. Nice shot. Whoa, look at that. Icy, cold, chilly. Fiesta. Three bars. No doubt. Cerveza fria, por favor. Yeah, so it goes something like this. You're in L.A. You got Miller Lite. Life is good. Rolling with a Ram Tough Magnum motor, get a new Dodge Ram or a new Dakota. California's truck stop. A new Dodge. California's truck stop. You can out drive, out hustle, out tough, out muscle, out tow, out run, out work, and out fun. Show them what you got. Ram's big rig looks and that feel for the road. California's truck stop. Plus room, plus torque, and a lot of payload. California's truck stop. California's truck stop. The new Dodge. Sunday Night Sports with Fred Rogan, Sunday at 11.15. Tied at two, Cleveland will send up the heart of the order in the top of the fourth by Ergo Bell and Murray against Glavin. By Ergo grounded a short his first time up. This is the 12th hitter Glavin has faced. He's now thrown only one first pitch strike, which is unlike him, Joe. You're correct, but as I said earlier, he usually gives up his runs in the first three innings. In fact, in the course of the season, he gave up 40 runs in the first three innings and only 36 for the remainder of the ball game. So he gets better as the game progresses. The 2-0. A fastball hit high in the air to left. Back goes Klesko to the edge of the warning track, and he has it. This 1995 World Series game is brought to you by Chevrolet, the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet, Sharp Electronics Corporation. From Sharp Minds come Sharp Products. And Tagamet HB, the most prescribed medication of its kind, is now for heartburn. Tagamet HB. Now it's Bell who poked an opposite field single to right leading off the second and then trotted home ahead of Murray who homered as the next hitter. And a ball outside. Since they sawed Albert's bat in half after game one of the division series 
He's managed only one home run. That was off Bob Wolcott in game one of the LCS in Seattle and generally hasn't hit well. Are you making a statement there? I'm just asking a question, really. I'll tell you what. He's seen a lot different pitching, too, than he saw in that series. When they keep throwing balls away on you, away, 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 I mean, it's tough to hit them. I wouldn't check any, anybody's bat for Cork either. There it is again. Outside a ball, and he chased it. I mean, when you're an Albert Bell, I mean, he can take you deep in any part of the ballpark. Sooner or later, he's going to look out there and hit one deep to Ryder, hit one out. Both these pitching staffs have done to good teams and great hitters what those teams and hitters never experienced during the regular season. The Indians shut down the two Martinez's and even Griffey to a certain extent for Seattle, completely shut down Vaughn and Canseco in the heart of the Red Sox order. The Braves held Cincinnati with Sanders and Gant doing almost nothing especially Sanders held them to five runs in four games shut the Indians out with Maddox on two hits last night. That adage about good pitching stopping good hitting has never been truer than in this postseason. Seattle got only 12 runs in the LCS against the Indians. That's a record low in any postseason series that went six or seven games. Well the reason for that Bob is that good pitchers can always get to hitters weaknesses. Average pitchers can't get to their weaknesses. You have to be able to pitch to a hitters weakness to keep them under control. 2 2 pitch to Bell and the count runs full. The first five outs Glavin got were all ground outs. The last five have all been in the air. The last Joe after this pitch, if he attaches any significance to that, struck him out. Which is the first K put in the scorebook tonight by Glavin. Before we get to Joe's response, let's pose a question. Tonight's Toyota Diamond Dust baseball fact. Lefty Williams, as you all know, lost three games for the Black Sox in the 1919 World Series. Might not have been trying to win them. Which former Yankee is the only pitcher to lose three games in one World Series? Do we have to have it now? <laughs> there is no prize, so okay. take your time. All right. Here's Murray who homered his first time. Outside for a ball. What about the significance for me is that now he's going to more change ups whereas he was throwing more fastballs sinking fastballs early but I think that's his M.O. That's why he gives up more runs in the first three innings than he does later in the ball games. I think he finds his rhythm and he starts to use his change up more effectively. The high fastball was the one that Murray hit out. Some of the balls were hit on the ground were sinking fastballs. But now a lot of change ups are being mixed in so he's getting a few more fly balls. And he falls behind Murray 3 0 with Ramirez on deck. That's like three in a row. Three off speed pitches in a row Joe. And the last one high and outside against Murray but again the off speed stuff. Right. You and I talked earlier about Murray and as he gets along in years still sits on fastballs both ways. And I mean if you make a mistake he still hits you hard and hits you deep. And Glavin is well aware that a green light is flashing if Eddie Murray sees something he likes. Come on back Eddie. Well that was not a fastball. That was not a four seam fastball. Looked like he turned us over a little bit and took a little bit off and Eddie is questioning the pitch. See that is not his good fastball. That is a fastball that he took a little bit off of. We should see a lot of rotation and you do on that because he's turning it over a little bit and taking some of the speed off. The 3 1 pitch. Now he strolls to first. Same pitch. So Glavin records his first strikeout and his first walk on consecutive hitters here in the fourth. Jimmy Williams, that's the well, they want Braves him third base coach. They want him to play behind. Murray at first base at least that's what he thought I thought he was saying but now he's changing his mind at first they wanted him to play behind Eddie Murray at first base. Here's Ramirez grounded out his first time. He is six for thirty seven now in the postseason and four of those six hits came in one game four for four with two homers in game two against Seattle at the Kingdom apart from that one game 
he has been a confused young hitter up there. You know, and, and, and for the most part, Bob, and we watched him last night and here tonight, anything down and away, he's still trying to pull. Hits this ball hard, though, and it drops in for a hit. Actually, that was an example of what you're talking about there, Bob. That was a sinking pitch away, and he actually hit it. Look, it was a line drive, but he broke his back. That was a good pitch there by Glavin, and he did try to pull it. See where this pitch is? Down and away. He tries to pull it, breaks his bat, but he hits a line drive. You have to be very strong to do this right out there on the end of the bat, but he's strong enough to get it over the infield to the line drive. He's got excellent power the other way, John. As I said, I'm, I'm surprised throughout this series thus far and the league championship series that he hasn't made his mind up a little bit more to really try and go the other way. I mean, he did it when he hit the two home runs in Seattle. He hit one to deep right center. And uh, as he talks with Davey Nelson, the Indians first base coach, I mean, he can't hit that way. He's, he's, he's going to be a good hitter. I mean, he's a solid young hitter now. He's a kid hits 20, I mean, 23 years old with 31 home runs this year. And, and uh, I mean, tremendous power. And he hits for average. Tommy stands in and takes a ball. He's 0 for 1. His eight postseason RBIs are the most on the Indian squad. Well, you see, he's done very well this year against left handed pitching. 275, that's a good average for a left handed hitter against left handed pitching. He didn't hit with much power, but yet he improved his average a lot. 1 and 1. But remember, in the past, Glavin has not been that effective against left-handed pitching. And I always wonder why he doesn't move over to the first base side of the rubber when he's pitching to left-handers and go back to the right-hand side of the rubber when he wants to pitch to right-handers. So he stays over on the third base side, and that takes a little bit of the angle away from the left-handed hitter. Sliced foul one and two. I know one thing, if you're going to if you're going to stay on that side, and, and not so much with a fastball, Joe, as, as you talked earlier, but if you're going to try and throw breaking balls to a left-handed batter as right. Tommy heads back to the dugout for a new piece of wood, if you're going to if you're going to start from that angle and throw breaking balls to a left-hander, you're going to have to start that thing exactly. way inside on that guy. That I mean, to have it come back and catch the corner or or be a decent-looking pitch to hit anyway. At 39, Eddie Murray obviously doesn't run very well. What about the outfield arms in case of a sharp single here with two out? I still think that he will be able to score, especially with two outs. And you look at Klesko in left, he doesn't throw that well. Justice used to throw very well, but he's had problems with his shoulder this year. Grissom, average thrower in center field. Not any great arms in the outfield here. The one two pitch called strike three. Two strikeouts in the inning. Two men stranded. Still a 2 2 game. Chevy Lumina, a car you can trust, a car so well engineered and affordable, you could have it paid off long before it needs its first tune-up. Chevy Lumina, because someday you'll realize nobody's got enough money and everybody's got enough worries. In this day and age, the old camcorder with its tunnel vision is, shall we say, history? Now look at the world with a sharp view cam. The big bright color view screen frees you to see all the action, and the pivoting lens gets shots the old camcorders can. There's even instant replay with color and sound. So it's out with the old cam, in with sharp view cam. Now get up to a $200 rebate when you buy a sharp view cam. 
Two years ago, Boston College crushed Notre Dame's national championship dreams. Now the Fighting Irish seek redemption. Boston College battles Notre Dame next Saturday on NBC. Welcome back to Atlanta to the house that Hank Aaron built. I am now seated with the home run champion, Hank Aaron. Hank, this stadium will go down. It'll be torn down <laughs> in a year from now after next season. Does that disappoint you? Does it bother you? A little bit, but uh, you know, like everything else, it has to, time has to progress, you know. Should this be preserved as a historical monument? I think in some parts of it, I think it's going to be historic, you know, going to be preserved. I don't know whether the home run or whether the statue outside, I think some of it will be preserved. Right now, the plans are to keep the wall. Is that enough? Will that satisfy you, or, or are you still disappointed in it? No, no, I'll be satisfied. That's fine. You know, uh, th this is a brand new stadium we're building over across the street, and it's going to be fine facilities for the Atlanta Braves. Hank, you don't come to many games. Is there a reason why? No, I, you know, really, I, and people ask me why I don't come to many games. You know, I, I can probably see, stay at home and enjoy the game probably as much as I want to. I know exactly what's going on. You know, like last, last night, I got a chance to see Maddox pitch. I got a chance to see Hershey on the pitch. And I knew exactly what they were throwing. I knew exactly what pitches everybody was swinging at. And I was fine as second guessing. <laughs> Hank, it's great to see you. Congratulations. You've been a tremendous asset to the sport. It's always good to see you. Thank you very much. All right, Bob. Al, it's still nice to see Henry bringing his lunch to the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> Brown bag in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you there is just no justice. I mean, Hank got all the ink. You cleared waivers 755 <laughs> times. You didn't get any pub out of that, did you? No, nah, you know, I was one of those guys. I didn't worry about stuff. Javi Lopez with a drive. And back, back, back goes Albert Bell to the 385 sign to glove it. Could not go another half step. Well, the more you see of Javi Lopez, the more impressed you become with not only his power, but his hitting ability. He is a good hitter. Handles all the pitches. This is a breaking ball. He handles it well. He just barely gets under it, so he doesn't get it out of the ballpark. But he is a good hitter. Hit over 300. He is just a fine hitter. He's going to, and a fine receiver as well. Joe, did you see the look on his face right before he made contact? I mean, he, he knew what the pitch was going to be all the way, sitting on it, and I mean, he was gritting his teeth, biting his lip, and just missed. Now, Belliard. Playing in his fifth consecutive postseason. He was with the Pirates in 90. And now four straight postseason appearances as a member of the Braves. The breaking ball is a comebacker. Martinez takes care of him. And that brings us to tonight's Toyota Diamond Dust answer. Which former Yankee is the only pitcher other than Lefty Williams whom we mentioned earlier to lose three games in one World Series. A guess. Um, 1981. Uh, uh, I'll say uh, Ron. No I'll say uh, Frazier. George Frazier, <laughs> correct. Who? George Frazier, the right-hander. No, correct. I was talking about the fighter. Well, it wasn't Joe Frazier. Yeah. It wasn't smoking Joe. <laughs> it was George Frazier, who was not smoking in that postseason. He lost three games against the Dodgers out of the Yankee bullpen as Tommy Lasorda's team won the World Series. And Joe Frazier lost three, too, so I was, I was close. Glavin struck out his first time. Fastball called strike 0-2. Oh Doesn't Henry look great, Joe? Yes, he, uh, does. he really does. He yeah. threw out the first ball tonight and uh, enjoying life now. And, and uh, as he said, uh, sees a game whenever he wants to. And wife Billy with him down there. Yeah, hard to imagine he wouldn't be able to see a game whenever he wanted. Calls the front office. Hi, this is Hank Aaron. Mm -hmm. A couple of ducats oh, for sure. tonight. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Aaron. We're sold out. <laughs> sure, it's Hank. Cut it out. <laughs> Didn't you locker next to him? Uh, I was locked in a locker next to him, yes. <laughs> Out of respect, there is still a locker for number 44 yes, sir. at Fulton County Stadium. Mm -hmm. I imagine he liked to be near you. That would have been your that was, uh, locker. You. Just, was, you know, uh, just so that he could consult with you for tips. Yes. Well, we kept a lot of our mail in that locker because we used to get so much, Hank and I. Yeah, he was... Uh, I tell you, he was a great guy to be around, all, and still is. Longtime friend. Played in Milwaukee to finish out his career as a Brewer.
Counts full to Glavin. And he draws a two-out walk. Martinez has nothing like the command he had in game six at Seattle. No, as, as we said earlier, Bob, in, in talking about his location tonight, he, he's, he's been upstairs a lot. And, and for Dennis to really be effective, I mean, the Dennis Martinez that we know as he misses on a low fastball to Glavin, the Dennis Martinez that we know is sinker, sinker, slider, fastball inside to move you back, curveball once in a while, and basically downstairs. In that game in Seattle, I mean, he was on or off the outside corner depending on who you are right-handed left-handed batter all night long. I never saw him pitch better than that one. I mean not that he's pitched a bad ball game here tonight by any means. But uh, he's been sharper. One and zero to Grissom comes down sidearm a chopper to short this scale to Bayerga covering. And they leave a man, and after four, this game is still not at a two. On the information superhighway, you need more than the latest technology. You need a very powerful drive. Chevy Blazer with the Vortec V6. It's nice to know it's there. My son Shaq is a big guy, and when he gets a cold, he gets a big cold. When he was little, well, he never really was little. Our doctor recommended Robitussin for his big coughs. Now that he's all grown up, Robitussin makes a cold formula too. These little liquid gels can take care of seven feet, 300 pounds of stuffiness, congestion, and coughs. Now, if they only had a formula for free throws. <laughs> Robitussin cold formulas recommended by Dr. Mom O'Neill. How close are you to all the sports you'd ever want to see with Prime Star? Closer than you think. Prime Star has all the action you're looking for, plus lots of other great programming, all with digital picture and sound. And since Prime Star is a service, there's no equipment to buy. And it all starts at about a dollar a day. So if you love sports, call 1-800-PRIME-STAR. Oral-B decided the best way to get rid of plaque would be to build a better toothbrush. The Advantage. Its power tip really gets behind your back teeth. And its action cup is great at removing plaque along the gum line. It's the best toothbrush ever from Oral-B. You're my agent. You have to do something about this. My face is on the cup with a duck. Well, I'm allergic to ducks. Now at McDonald's, get a free Looney Place to go cup when you supersize any extra value meal for just 39 cents more. How'd I get on a McDonald's cup with Marino? Some agent. I'm allergic to dolphins! For Tom Glavin and several Atlanta teammates, this is the fourth trip to the postseason, third trip to the World Series. They still haven't won at all. Here's Glavin on that topic. I think as a player, you kind of wonder how many chances you're going to get. And for this group of guys, we've We've had a lot of chances, and you know when you look around at the Don Manningleys, Don Manningleys, and the Dale Murphys of the game, who uh, don't have that many opportunities, didn't get that many opportunities. You have to wonder how many you're going to get, and uh, you know so that's a concern. And obviously, with the the ever-changing economics of baseball, you wonder how long uh, an organization is going to be able to keep a team like this together. So, from those two standpoints, there's a sense of urgency. The first pitch, Pena hits it hard, but Justice runs it down and right. You know, Glavin mentioned the changing economics of baseball. He would know better than most. He's the Braves player rep, and he was among the most visible of the Player Association guys during all the labor strife, and the fans really took it out on him. When they put the uniforms back on, Glavin, who was a very affable guy, well spoken, he really took some abuse from the fans, and he was an upfront guy. He said, It's understandable. We took the game away from them, owners and players both. I understand that they need to vent some frustration. Bud Selig, with a guy who played for him briefly in Milwaukee for a couple of years at the tail end, Henry Aaron. Martinez makes contact. Justice again and right on two pitches, two outs in the top of the fifth. 
Another view from the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes from Pompano Beach, Florida. This is the 30th World Series Goodyear Blimps have televised. When does the term interim or the word interim disappear from in front of Bud Selig's name as commissioner of baseball? Presidents have had shorter terms. Well, he's, uh, he's elated in Milwaukee anyway because of the uh, the new ballpark that uh, is supposedly going to get underway next spring due to be finished in 1999. But again I, I think he enjoys the job Bob as the uh, so called interim commissioner. Um, and again I, uh, I don't know how long he wants to keep it if he wants to keep it on a permanent basis or not. It's a beautiful rented coat he has tonight anyway. <laughs> well it's one of the perks when you're baseball's <laughs> He's nominal my boss. czar. Yeah I know that I know that <laughs> voice of the Brewers. Lofton's 0 for 2. He has now been the interim commissioner longer than Faye Vincent was the actual commissioner mm -hmm. following the death of Bart Giamatti. That's not a bad payday too I guess. Has its rewards. A ball and a strike to Lofton. I'm on my best behavior tonight. Oh, you it's the are. World Series and no, I'm, I'm enjoying myself no. and so I'm reserving political commentary. I can't believe how relaxed you are. Taking a lot of pressure off me. <laughs> The one two pitch slapped to third knocked down by Jones he'll have to hurry hesitates no safe when he double clutched on the throw it was over Joe well the ball was hit sharply he knocked it down he still had time but he did not get a good grip on it now watch he'll knock it down now watch when he reached for it he does not get a good grip right there so he has to re clutch and when he does that it's all over because Lofton is across the bag. The same plan to watch. He knocks it down. He should have made the play originally but when he reaches for it he still has time. But he just does not get a good grip on it. He has to double clutch and you can forget about it. That should be an error. And it is and the totals are now identical two three and one for both clubs. Let's see how long he waits. Doesn't go on the first pitch. Outside ball one. Glavin does not have a great move to first base, but he varies his delivery to the plate. He will use a slide step occasionally, and other times he will go to the high leg kick. He will just continually change his motion and his pattern, which keeps the base runner off balance. And we're talking tonight with, with Bobby Cox, too, in, in uh, his, uh, his uh, catching situation here with O'Brien. And Lopez, and we were talking about which would be the better of the two as far as throwing goes. He said they're both outstanding throwing catchers. This guy's got a great arm. Talking about Lopez, and I've seen O'Brien, and you have too, Joe. He's a super receiver with a very good arm. You see the difference there? He used the slide step there. He went very quickly to the plate. Other times he will take a little more time. But the Braves pitching staff overall really do not hold runners very well. Glavin did not have a single pickoff, right? During the 1995 season now with the count at 2 and 0. Oh, the option of the pickoff is all but 100 percent of the, the uh, pitch out rather is all but 100 percent removed. So let's see what Lofton does. Not going again and Vizquel taps it foul. Well because he's changing his pattern to the plate. He used the slide step then he li lifts his leg. And so far Lofton has not been able to figure him out. In fact I am more impressed with Lofton as a base runner than I am as a base stealer. There is a big difference between the two. He has led the American League in swipes four straight years. He's going now. Vizquel takes it and the throw is not nearly in time. And that was not a good throw by Lopez. He did not get a good grip on the ball. Maybe there's something on the ball out there because Lopez did not have a good grip on it. The ball seemed to slip out of his hand because he does have an excellent throwing arm. Lofton doesn't get a great jump. See, there's the slide step, but he gets a good enough jump so that when there's not a good throw made by Lopez, now watch how, see, right there, he doesn't have it and he bounces it to second base. He just did not get a good grip on it when he transferred it from glove to hand. The pitch was a ball, so now the 3 1 bounces in front of the plate. Lofton's going to go to third on ball four. 
And Bayerga will have an RBI chance. Runners at the corners with two out. Well, this is why I think he's a good base runner. He sees the ball go down, and he immediately anticipates that it's going to be a ball's going to get away from the catcher. Watch Lofton behind you. The ball bounces right away. He's going. He does not wait to see how far the ball bounces away. He's on his way right away, and that's what a good base runner will do. He anticipates the ball being in the dirt and bouncing away. You have to anticipate things as a base runner, and that's what Lofton does pretty well. So a walk and a wild pitch on ball four. And the hitter is Bayerga. With Lofton at third and Vizquel at first. And Vizquel could be running here. He stole 29. And they'd be hesitant to throw through with the daring Lofton at third. Bayerga grounded to short and fly to deep left. Ball strike one. I don't think they will let him go until Bayerga falls behind the count maybe one and two or get two strikes. I think until that time they will give Bayerga a chance to drive in the run. Klesko way off the line and left. Now Bayerga unless you really give him something off speed Bob and inside he's not going to pull you. He's going to be left center to center right with power in the gaps. But again as I said if you if you if you give him something off speed a change of pace or, or a breaking ball up that he can that he can really jump on that he'll pull. So I'm Homer to dead center and the pennant clincher off Randy Johnson no less in Seattle last Tuesday. Two and one. You know Joe in, in talking about this ballpark which they have named the launching pad. There have been a couple of balls hit tonight that I thought had chances to go and especially the one by Lopez that really didn't that didn't carry that well at all. Well the last couple of years the ball doesn't seem to carry as well on certain nights because I think the wind has an effect on the ball. Not going on the 2 1 pitch which is sliced foul. Well even the ball Eddie Murray hit out. Right. He stood at the plate like it was a no doubter and it didn't get over the wall by all that much. Mm -hmm. right. Fans everywhere doing what the Kingdom fans started in tribute to Randy Johnson rising with two strikes on the opposition hitter. Full count. So Vizquel will be off from first. Lofton at third. Tied at two in the top of the fifth. Glavin still will not give in to Bayerga on this pitch. Right field. Justice coming on. Has it. Some strange actions out there, but he made the catch. This is about how you go to sleep one day, running your business the same way you always have, and wake up the next morning with things like email, voicemail, PCs, pages, a new communications network for free. It's not a fairy tale, a myth, or a parable. This is about how things can really happen. This is about opening your eyes instead of closing them, and making a call instead of a wish. Network MCI, that's how. If you were to make a list of the safest towns in America, at the top of that list would be Eau Claire, Wisconsin. If you were to make a list of cars with the most standard safety features for the money, at the top of that list would be the Chevy Cavalier. So if you lived in Eau Claire and you drove a Cavalier, would that make you one of the safest people in America? Probably not, but it's a good start. Lucky Vinny here reviewing Subway Steak and Cheese Sandwich at the home of the Steak and Cheese Philadelphia. Steak and Cheese, please. So what do we think? This is the real McCoy. Tender, juicy steak with loads of real melted cheese. We have a winner. Subway, what a sandwich. Centrum, it's more complete, a more advanced multivitamin. Centrum's commitment to ongoing research assures you the best nutritional support. If a vitamin's in the news, it's in my Centrum. Like they say, from A to zinc. Centrum makes a science of being more complete. 
in case you missed it. And this is absurd for someone to go in and take a cheap shot like this. He deserves more than $4,000. And yes, you can get fired if you make enough mistakes. That's part of life. Next, Dick Butkus. He's about as close to Butkus as Snow White. You want to hear some strong opinions? The NFL on NBC, Sundays at 12.30 Eastern Time. I thought, you the Justice was having some trouble with this when he wobbled a little bit. What do you think happened? I think he lost the ball in the lights. Bob, you're exactly right. He, he made his initial run on the ball, then lost it momentarily, recovers, and makes a nice catch on a ball that I'm sure would have been routine. Baerga thought he had the base hit. It was a slicing liner. Baerga thought he had the base hit, a ball in the gap, but Justice made a nice play. He recovered very nicely. That's what David Justice was looking at on that slicing liner hit by Baerga. Lemke as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Grounds one two by Erga. And there's the first out. NBC's new Friday lineup is heating up with an all new episode of Unsolved Mysteries. That's followed by Dateline and part two of the season premiere of the acclaimed drama series Homicide. You know Robert Stack doesn't look all that different than from the Elliott Ness days. Mm -hmm. Except he's in color now instead of in black yep. and white. He's still solving them though. And Walter Winchell isn't narrating it anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Up steps Chipper Jones. Hit the ball hard twice. Double to right. Sacrifice fly to left. Let's see if Tommy can chase this one down. No. You look at Chipper Jones. Let's see if we can get a close up of his face. There is at least a faint resemblance to the very young, I'm talking about 1952 53, Mickey Mantle. And in fact, his dad, Larry Sr., and Larry is Chipper's real first name, idolized Mantle and taught the youngster to switch hit in the fashion that Mickey's dad had done for him. You know, I'll tell you a guy who he reminds me of. There is, uh, there is Chipper's wife, Karen Jones, and, and you may remember him, Bob. I'm sure Joe has seen a picture of him uh, from time to time. Former Yankee third baseman Gil McDougal. That's who he reminds me of, really, facial wise. And a lot of people are saying, who is Gil McDougal? Well, I'm not going to tell you. Well, not in I'm going to leave it right here. In Cleveland, they know because he's the guy who hit the line drive that struck mm -hmm. Herb Score, yeah. the great left hander, and now the longtime voice of the Indians, yep. in the head and short circuited his career when he was one of the most overpowering uh, left handers in all of baseball in the 50s. I mean, we're going back a ways with Gil McDougal, but no, I guess you are with 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 Mickey too. But uh, he was he being McDougal, an outstanding Yankee third baseman. One out, nobody on. Two and two to Jones with McGriff on deck. He goes the opposite way, and it drops in front of Bell. He is a more mature hitter. Then his rookie status would lead you to believe at first glance, Joe. Well, I think one of the reasons he's just having fun. He laid off last year without the entire season, so he comes back this year. He's just happy to be here, and he's still having fun. I mean, this is great for Chipper, and that's the way you're supposed to approach the World Series. This is supposed to be fun, although a lot of players aren't able to address it that way. And you see the reaction of his wife, Karen. She says, go, Chipper. Griff rounded to Martinez, then hit another comebacker, which Martinez deflected to Baerga for a 1 4 3 put out. So he's 0 for 2. Had the homer last night. Griff is one of those hitters that the more he sees of you, the more he adjusts to what you're trying to do. He can do a lot of different things. He can go the other way with you, and he can also pull you. And because Martinez is pitching him away, I expect him to find a gap in left center or right center because he stays pretty much back through the middle when a guy stays away from him a lot. He'll climb the ladder if you make a mistake at the letters or even shoulder high and wallop that high pitch out of the park by pulling it. But he'll also drop the bat on the ball inside or outside and golf one down the right field line or take you out to the opposite field if you pitch him low and away. Three and oh. And especially if you're talking about a 
a guy who, who does not throw an excessive 90 or somebody in the middle 90s to high 90s. There are a lot of guys that can jump on on anything middle 80s to lower 80s upstairs. But those guys that uh, that can give you the extra heat upstairs, Bob, they're a little tougher to jump on. I don't care how good you are as a hitter. Any guys who throw in the high 90s, middle 90s, a little tougher. Hershiser couldn't get it past him last night. Let's see if we've got that flashback ready. Here it comes right here. This was a first pitch fastball, his first at bat. And Hershiser knew he'd made a mistake, and McGriff did not let him get away with it. Now sitting on a 3 0 pitch. Gives him the breaking ball, hits it hard to Bayerga. There's one to Vizquel, and there's two. Swinging away on 3 0, he grounds into the 4 6 3. Through five, still tied at two. My hands were steady. My eyes were clear and bright. My walk had purpose. My steps were quick and light. And I held firm to what I felt was right. Like a rock. Like a rock. You're my agent. You have to do something about this. My face is on the cup with a duck. Well, I'm allergic to ducks. Now at McDonald's, get a free loony place to go cup when you supersize any extra value meal for just 39 cents more. How'd I get on the McDonald's cup with Marino? I'm agent. I'm allergic to dolphins! Leading candidate for Horse of the Year, Cigar, looks for his 12th straight victory by winning the Breeders' Cup Classic, one of seven championship races next Saturday on NBC. Two years ago, Boston College crushed Notre Dame's national championship dreams. Now the Fighting Irish seek redemption. Boston College battles Notre Dame next Saturday on NBC. On to the sixth. Neither Glavin nor Martinez is truly mowing them down. But it's still a two all game. Glavin is 29. Martinez is 40. Martinez is a grandfather already. Has an infant grandson. And here's another indication of the difference. Glavin's younger brother Michael. Was a class A teammate. A first baseman in the Cleveland organization. Of Dennis Martinez's son. Dennis Jr. They were both at Burlington. The class A farm of the Indians this year. Dennis Jr. A pitcher. And Glavin's younger brother Michael, a first baseman. All even tonight, and neither one with his best stuff. If either one of these guys is around come the ninth inning, I'll be surprised, and I think you fellas will too. I'm surprised at that last story. Here's Bell. I live to raise your eyebrows. <laughs> I know you do. I love it too. Do you believe it, Joe? <laughs> Say it ain't so, Joe. <laughs> When you guys are out at the four-star <laughs> restaurants, I'm calling room service. I'm hitting the books in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Two and out of Bell, who's singled and struck out. I think this is a very key <laughs> inning for Tom Glavin, because if he can get out of this inning, I think it throws a lot of pressure on the Cleveland Indians. If you can get them to the sixth inning, and you're still tied in the bottom of the six. I think there's more pressure starts to build on the visiting team when you're in this situation. But you can see he is struggling here with Albert Bell because he doesn't want to make a mistake. By my count, Glavin has been ahead with a first pitch strike only twice all night, and now he's behind 3-0 to Albert Bell with Murray on deck. Albert came into the postseason sizzling. 31 home runs in August and September. Tying Babe Ruth's September record with 17. And a 
walk to lead off the sixth. Here's what Murray did his first time up. After a single by Bell, high fastball, and he takes it out over the left field wall. Plesko had no chance. That made him, Joe, the third oldest player to homer in a World Series game. And look who's number two on that list <laughs> for the Phillies against the Orioles in 83. You mean I was still playing that when I was 40? You were still <laughs> thrilling them. You weren't playing. You were thrilling them. Murray walked his second time up. Swings and misses. But Glavin, like Martinez, will not give in to the middle of the lineup. And you see, he walked Bell. He comes right back with a changeup to Eddie Murray. He's a good double play man in Murray, yes. a guy who does not have a lot of speed. And, and again, in last night's game, beat a lot of sinking fastballs into the ground against Maddox. Albert Bell at first obviously not a threat to steal but I'll tell you something in a double play situation he is like a Mack truck coming down. Remember the play against Seattle with Joey Cora Cora with a chance for a double play at second and somehow Bell got there. He will flatten. I you. mean I'm telling you he took a shot at Cora and stopped what would have been a double play. Got the force at second but Cora had no chance to make any kind of a throw to first on a ball that could have been a double play ball should have actually was it very hard. He and his twin brother Terry were football players in high school in Louisiana. Albert had football scholarship off offers, went the baseball route at uh, LSU. Two and one. A lot of those big outfielders like to run over a little second baseman. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's what they do for a living. They love to do that. A lot of times they tried to run over a second baseman who wasn't there. Yeah, that's what you have to mm -hmm. do. You have to make sure you're not there yep. when they get there. To one pitch hit in the air to center. Grissom comes in. There's the first out. Another change up that Murray hit off the end of the bat. Grissom does play that shallow center field. I mentioned Paul Blair. Anybody else you can think of who played as shallow as Grissom? Well, I, I had the opportunity to play sometimes with a uh, with a guy who I thought was one of the best center fielders in 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 my era, and I think. Uh, Joe saw him play too and that was Kurt Flood right. who played in St. Louis and uh, uh, he played a deep center. He yeah. played a deeper center field. He had a great arm and and I mean his his strong suit was charging balls that were hit into the gaps or in into short center and I mean he got such a great jump on a ball and played a deep center. He didn't hit, I tell you what if he hit something over Flood's head it had to be out of the park. One and order Ramirez. One for two tonight. Runner up last year to Kansas City's Bob Hamlin in the rookie of the year balloting in the American League. Hamlin experienced the sophomore jinx was sent back to the minors for a period of time this year. Ramirez continued to improve. Two and oh way outside with both of them. And all of a sudden now Glavin has gone almost exclusively to the changeup. Now when I say change up it doesn't mean they're all the same speed. He varies the speed even on his change ups. Bell at first with one out on the 2 0 pitch. The change again. Yeah, but see that one was a different speed than the pitch before. And the one thing that Glavin has he has great arm speed with his change up to have an effective change up you have to have great arm speed. And it stays on the same plane as his fastball. A lot of change ups will come in a little higher and sink a little bit. His, look at it, it's like a fastball, stays on the same plane, but the speed is different. And Bell is back easily. You're seeing a pair of outstanding professional pitchers, Glavin in the prime of his career, three time 20 game winner, who is trying to find a groove. Right. Now he is just hanging in there and trying to find that comfort zone and get that mastery. He's never had it for more than a few batters at a time tonight. 
And the same could be said of Martinez. 2-1 pitch. Three balls and a strike. But you know, he's he's in the area where where you as a hitter, and if, the, if there's somebody on it, you got a chance to knock in a run or you're in a tie game, and you're a Ramirez or a Murray or a Bell, somebody who can, can hit the ball deep, you hate to walk. I mean, guys like that are up there to hit and hit the ball deep and hit it hard. And that's what Ramirez wants to do. If there's something close and you think you can reach it and hit it hard, you go. Like that, yep. but he couldn't catch up with it. Glavin has walked three. He's thrown a wild pitch. And he has consistently been behind Cleveland hitters. A call just received in the bullpen. That was the bullpen coach, Ned Yost. And there is activity for Atlanta. Homie's on deck. A small chance that he could be going on three and two. Albert Bell with about a four step lead. He doesn't want to get picked off in this situation. Not with Ramirez up there. Sitting three two and only one out. McMichael and Borbone. Left hander Borbone. not going 3 2 pitch fouled off and that was pretty good hitting there by Ramirez because that's the first fastball that he has thrown him in this entire bat as you see Ramirez punished lefties this year but I don't know that that stat applies here because left handed hitters do better against Glavin as we mentioned at the beginning of the game than righties generally do I saw Ramirez shaking his head he had a good pitch to hit there Joe and, and missed it I mean just wasn't on it all the way. Struck him out. And you just know after he throws you a good fastball, he's going to follow that with a changeup, but not a lot that you can do because, again, the good arm speed here, it looks like a fastball until you swing at it. You think it's a fastball, and all of a sudden, it's not there yet. And he was a little late on the fastball the pitch before. Hey, you could see him that time, Joe, reach for that change of pace. He was out on his front foot and, and really tries to extend himself to get it. Glavin on, on some of those changes Joe it almost has a screwball type effect running down and away or running away from a right handed batter with the off speed stuff. Glavin's third strikeout he recovered from three and one to get it. Tommy cuts and tips it foul for strike one. But what a good change up does to a hitter it makes him slow his bat down and then he has to try to speed it back up for a fastball and that's what. Maddox does so well he makes the hitter slow his bat down and then all of a sudden you'll throw your fastball and you have to try to catch up again. Maddox threw 93 pitches in a complete game last night. Glavin is at 98 in the sixth. Shortstop Belliard takes it himself beats Bell to the bag. They strand a man. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Glavin and Martinez still tied at two. Not in this car. Avis Satellite Guidance. First in the most cities across America. Another way the employee owners of Avis are making the future safer, faster, and better. Oral-B decided the best way to get rid of plaque would be to build a better toothbrush. The advantage. Its power tip really gets behind your back teeth. And its action cup is great at removing plaque along the gum line. It's the best toothbrush ever from Oral-B. Because the world can be a big, scary place. The Chevy Blazer with the exclusive driver control system. It's nice to know it's there. Lucky Vinny here reviewing Subway Steak and Cheese Sandwich at the home of the Steak and Cheese Philadelphia. Steak and cheese, please. So what do we think? This is the real McCoy. Tender, juicy steak with loads of real melted cheese. We have a winner. Subway, what a sandwich. 
Friday, a family camping trip becomes a young mother's nightmare. I just couldn't do anything. A real-life River Wild on Unsolved Mysteries, all new NBC Friday. David Justice was part of those worst to first Atlanta Braves from the basement to the pennant 1990 to 91. We asked him before the series began what the difference is between the 1991 Braves and now this Atlanta team in its third World Series of the decade. We could do no wrong. So we we're in the best possible situation. But now, you know, it's a lot different. Um, the expectations are so high for our ball club and, and uh, you know, if we win, great. If we lose, then everybody's going to probably hate us here in Atlanta. So it's kind of tough, you know, what we got to deal with now. But hey, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I mean, this is my sixth year in the big leagues. And I've been to three World Series now, you know what I mean? And another playoff, you know, against the Phillies. So I, only thing more I can ask for is a, is a World Series championship ring. The World Series of 91 on the short list of the great World Series ever played. Twins and Braves battling through seven taut games, most of them one run games, some of them extra innings. Then the next year they went six against the Blue Jays and lost the sixth game here in extra innings by a run. A man at third, the tying run at third, when their last hitter Otis Nixon tried to drag a bunt and almost beat it out as the series ended. The 1 0 pitch to Justice who has walked and delivered an RBI single just his second run knocked home in this postseason. I think what Justice was talking about is they have put a lot of pressure on themselves especially in 93 when they played the Phillies and they were not capable of backing it up. They put a lot of pressure on themselves this year but I think they're a much better prepared team to be able to handle that. In there two and one. And you know, no matter who you talk to, Joe, and no matter what the sport is, I mean, it all boils down to a ring. I mean, the championship yeah. ring. That's that's the finale. That's it. You've got one from the '64 Cardinals, don't you? Yes, and two more payments, and that baby's mine. <laughs> Long-term installment plan. Three-decade installment plan. Two and two to justice. Well, Joe Morgan, of course. Uh, a world's champion. Um, it's it's uh, it's something nice. It really is. It's it's something that you, you always look back on, and and uh, as we've said many many times, a lot of players and great players who uh, who have never had the opportunity. Martinez works two and two to justice, and a full count. Cresco Cresco is next, and then Javi Lopez. Two pitch. Breaking ball. Hit hard the other way. Albert Bell can't get to it. And now the ball gets past him. And on his way to second is Justice. It could be scored a double. It could be scored a single and an error. If it's the latter, it's the fourth postseason error in left for Albert Bell. Well, when the ball was first hit, I thought he had a chance to get it. But as we talked earlier, Justice will go the other way. And he lines us down there. Bell is there, but he just does not feel the ball. And when it bounces away, of course, Justice goes into second. And Bell is there. Just bad fielding. Got to be a single and an error as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it concerned. can't be a double. I, I, yeah. It is. Single and an error. Klesko steps in on the first pitch a bouncer toward the right side by Erga shovels it over to Murray just in time. And there was a little confusion it looked like Joe as to who should have fielded that ball. Well Murray thought he was going to take it and then he decided to go to the bag and it was a long run for by uh, I'm just not sure Murray felt that Martinez could get there in time here. Look now Martinez is not way ahead of the runner and he didn't take a good angle. So all of a sudden the ball takes a bad hop also. And Bayerga makes a good play. But the real point is, Klesko gets the job done. He pulls the ball to the right side, moves the runner over to third base. And on that replay, you can see that 
Klesko is clearly out at first base, but again, nice play by Baerga, but good hitting there by Klesko. Mark Wiley, the Indians pitching coach, out again for another visit with Dennis Martinez. You're right, Joe. That ball took a funny little hop on Baerga and almost got away. I mean, he had a spirit at the last moment. But Klesko again did the job. Watch this little hop right at the end. Watch by Erga. That was an easy bouncer. All of a sudden it takes a quick little spin to his right or to his left, I should say. Watch it now. You think you get a better angle here. Watch this ball take a funny little skip right there. By Erga had a routine play up until then. Had to take a couple of quick steps to make the grab and then the toss to Murray. Martinez will stay in to work to Lopez. Eric Plunk, a right-hander, Alan Embry, a left-hander, are throwing in the bullpen for the Indians. The infield's going to come in. I like this young hitter. I think he'll get the job done. Grounded out, line to deep left. And a called strike. He pinned Albert Bell to the 385 sign in left center his last time up narrowly missing an extra base hit Lopez had the three run homer in the tenth that sealed the win in game two of the LCS at Cincinnati hit 14 of them in the regular year fastball bounced foul and it's 0 and 2 very good pitch there by Martinez that was a sinker down and in he wants to keep the ball down so he can get a ground ball to one of his infielders if not a strikeout and watch the sink on this ball see it starts up and out over the plate sinks down and in and Lopez just grounds it foul outside of third just as a third with one down in the bottom of the sixth Cleveland two, Atlanta two. why I like how the Lopez in this situation hit very well with runners in scoring position. Atlanta leading the series of course. One nothing after winning three two last night. And the 0 2 pitch. Pena backhands it. field in the one two pitch sidearm and he got a piece of it. You're going to drop down on any right handed hitter. I mean if, if, if you're going to try to intimidate him a little bit you've been coming over the top and throwing the low inside sinkers and what have you. If you're going to come sidearm you better make sure that it's not from the middle in. I mean middle out. There you see it right there. That wasn't a bad pitch. I mean Lopez got a piece of it but it wasn't the best of pitches for Dennis Martinez. You want the ball down low and away if you're going to throw a breaking ball and I mean if you're going to throw sidearm sometimes Joe and, and and try to intimidate a guy with a good fastball down and in to back him out of there but not in that area. Another one two pitch sidearm again in the air to deep center. This at least gets a run home maybe more Lofton will watch it leave. That ball just kept on carrying. And Lopez continues to be a clutch performer in the postseason, snapping the two all tie, and the Braves lead it four to two. You knew when it left the bat that he had snapped the tie with at least a sacrifice fly, but that ball just kept on going. The Braves have not been a good hitting ball club, but they have been a club that produces runs, and they are a powerful hitting ball club. They get a lot of clutch base hits. And Javier Lopez is one of the best. You're just talking Joe about sidearm pitches. If you're going to if you're going to throw somebody sidearm 
You better make sure it's from the middle out. I mean, away. That ball was right down Main Street. Look at this. But you have to give Lopez credit. He stays out there. He extends and gets to it. He didn't try to pull it, and he's so strong he can drive the ball out in any part of the ballpark. That's why he's such a good hitter. He's running hard. He has no idea it's going to be gone. He's thinking extra base hit. Maybe he can stretch it into a triple. And then it goes out and you see his reaction. The 1 1 pitch to Belliard. Lopez kept Rafi in the game. If he hadn't come through there with at least the sacrifice fly, they would have pinch hit for Belliard now. He's 0 for 2. The shortstop because Jeff Blauser is a scratch for the World Series with a thigh bruise. Belliard hit just 222 this year in limited duty without a home run. In fact, he has one major league homer in a long career. He's coming up on 1,700 at bats since he hit one out in 1987. Well, everything Belliard did in last night's ball game was uncharacteristic of Belliard. He made an error and he drove in a run. <laughs> Both are not things that he does on a regular basis. Tries to bunt with two strikes, and he'll take a seat for the second out. This 1995 World Series game is brought to you by the makers of Advil. The employee owners of Avis were into the future, into it now, trying harder than ever. And Network MCI, how to get modern communications technology working for your business. Dwight Smith is going to bat for Tom Glavin. Now that he's got the lead, Cox is not going to let Glavin go any further. Well, Bob, in the past, the bullpen has been a liability for the Atlanta Braves. Now it is a security blanket. They have a very good bullpen, and it really showed in the LCS against the Reds. They did not give up any earned runs. They went extra innings a couple of times, but they did not give up anything. And this is his security blanket now as far as in the past World Series it's always been a liability. And the breaking ball is low to Dwight Smith. And now on one and oh he lines one through the middle for a hit. Dwight Smith a bargain free agent pickup for about 250 grand before the year began he had 16 pinch hits and 18 pinch hit RBIs for them. This ball almost takes the head off of Dennis Martinez. Again a pitch right down Main Street and Smith right on it. Martinez with a glove up about a day late and a dollar short on a bullet right back through the middle. That's Mark Wiley on the right of Mike Hargrove, Buddy Bell to his left. They'll allow Martinez to pitch to Grissom and a called strike. Marquise has flied out, been hit by a pitch, and grounded out. Well, one of the reasons they're leaving Martinez in there with two outs is they hope he can get out of the inning because he's the second batter in the top of the seventh inning, so they would like to use him to get out of this inning and then pinch hit for him in the seventh. That's why they're leaving him out there. Well, and after all, he's, the damage has already been done, so if he can struggle and get out of this inning, it'll allow Hargrove not to use two players. He can only have to use one. Approaching the number of pitches where regardless of the score, they'd be thinking about having him finish his night. Here's that last breaking ball by Martinez. This time Tony Pena with a backhanded try on that ball. Knocked it down. Off quickly with a mask. Runner holding. Smith at first. Here it is on one and one with the runner going and it's hit through the hole. A hit and run single. Smith to third. 
Cosgrove may no longer have the luxury of letting Martinez try to finish the inning so he can hit for him in the top of the seventh. The next hitter, Lemke, is a switch hitter. It's Hargrove to the mound, not Wiley, and that means a change. He's going to the bullpen for the left-hander, Embry, to turn Lemke around, and we'll be right back. This isn't about why your business has to communicate better or when the time is ripe to put all the new technology to work. We're past that stage. This is about putting laptops on desks and pages in pockets. It's about email and the internet. It's about a person who puts it all together and a company that can give you the hardware and software for free. This isn't about blue sky or sci-fi or by the by. This is about now, about how. Network MCI, that's how. For cars that can benefit from higher octane... Frank, we're late. Texaco Clean System 3 Power Plus and Power Premium are formulated to clean your engine's intake valves, fuel injectors, and combustion chambers while you're driving. For smooth starts and sure acceleration, just give us five tanks, and we think you'll see a difference. A word of advice, though. Maybe you'd better leave the windows rolled up. Monday, the Fresh Prince and Carlton are trapped by a big, bad boyfriend. We're not really here! <laughs> Sorry. And in the house, Kim Wayans from In Living Color stalks Marion. And I shaved my mustache. In the house after Fresh Prince, NBC Monday. Dennis Martinez does not survive the sixth. Neither, for that matter. Does Tom Glavin, at least not the bottom half, he worked through six and then he was taken out for a pinch hitter. Both managers mindful of the fact that their starters were not especially sharp and it was only a question of who would weaken first. Well, and I think if you match your starters up against the Atlanta Braves starters, you're going to lose. I mean, I really believe that. I think the Cleveland Indians are going to have to match them up for a couple of innings and then change. I'm really surprised that the, that the Braves have shut them down the way they have, Bob. I mean, this is a good hitting ball club talking about the Indians. And even in tonight's game, Joe, I thought Martinez got away with a lot of pitches upstairs earlier that could have been hit. Well, you're right. That's why I say if you match their starters up, the Indians are going to lose that match. Alan Embry up and down three times between Cleveland and their Triple A farm at Buffalo this year. Throws very hard, mid 90s. Lemke, who's one for two with a walk, stands in and takes a fastball high. Just a single to open the inning, moved to second on an error on the same play by Albert Bell. After a ground out by Klesko, Lopez homered over the center field fence to make it 4 2. Bellyard fan, bunting foul with two strikes. Then that man, Dwight Smith, pinch hit a single followed by a Grissom single to right. And now it's 2-0 to Lemke. First and third, two out, two runs home. 4-2 Atlanta, bottom of the sixth. In the air to shallow center. Lofton's going to take it. Now we're going to get our first look at the Atlanta bullpen in this series as we come back after this from your local station. An amazing story of courage, tragedy, and joy. Two families bonded forever. You can't thank someone for giving you life. A special health watch only on NBC Nightly News Monday. Monday at 6 on the Channel 4 News, Selena. The murder trial enters its final phase. Channel 4 News legal expert Manuel Medrano live from the Houston courthouse as the closing arguments begin. Plus, breast cancer, the deadly disease that strikes millions of women. Now a simple step to help keep you safe. The secret may lie in what you eat. And your children in sports, now a choice more important than win or lose. Choosing the coach will help you make that decision Monday at 6. Dr. Dr. 
Can France and Italy, Austria and England, Germany, Spain, and the Netherlands ever really agree on a single currency? Actually, they already have. Gold MasterCard. It's accepted at more cash machines around the world Excuse me, guys. than any other card. Look for your Gold MasterCard invitation in the mail and apply today. Rolling with a Ram Tough Magnum Motor, get a new Dodge Ram or a new Dakota. A new Dodge. Out drive, out hustle, out tough, out muscle, out tow, out run, out work, and out fun. Show them what you got. Introducing California's Truck Stop. Now with a special allocation of the hottest trucks on the road today. Dodge Ram and Dodge Ram Club Cab. Plus get air at no extra charge. California's Truck Stop. The new Dodge. Monday at 4 on the Channel 4 News. Sexy, stylish, sleek, and splashing. The stars shine bright, flashing their Hollywood hair. We'll tell you why they sport it, the long and the short of it, and which stars refuse to part with their daring dues. Monday at 4. A lifelong dream and a sinister plan to get there. A dirty scheme of murder for money. And it's all caught on tape. Watch the new A Current Affair. Monday at 7.30, here on NBC4. Jess Marlowe, Wendy Takuda, Fritz and Fred, tomorrow at 6. Well, Cleveland is the home of the new Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but right now it's the Indian fans who are all shook up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Residuals must be good. That would be one of your least convincing <laughs> Elvis impersonators anywhere on the planet. <laughs> Get out of here. Come on. <laughs> new pitcher, new left fielder. We go to the seventh. Greg McMichael works. And a strike to Pena. Mike Devereaux, the surprise MVP of the league championship series against Cincinnati, is in left in place of Plesko. Interesting choice, McMichael. And I think he's bringing him in because of the success that they've had with the changeups. McMichael's best pitch, like Glavin, like Maddox, he features the changeup. And they have been successful in keeping the Indian hitters in check. So I think that's why they're bringing McMichael in in this situation. Another one of those guys, Joe, comes from the side. Got to make yourself stay in there against him. He was signed a few years ago by the Braves after being released by Cleveland. Maddox and Glavin held Cleveland to just five hits in 15 innings. This is our first look at the Atlanta bullpen in the series. But Glavin really flirted with trouble. There were a lot of balls hit hard against him. He walked a few. He was behind on the count a lot. Chopper over the mound. Charging is Lemke. He stumbles. He writes himself. And he gets the diving pain yet first. Mark Lemke is one of the best fielding second basemen in the National League, and they have a few real good fielding second basemen in this league. And this is an excellent play. There's the changeup. He hits on top of it. Now, this is a, just a tough play. He makes the play, slips, writes himself, and then fires a strike to first base to get the diving Tony Pena at first base. I mean, this is a tough play. He had to come a long way to get it. If he would have stayed back and let it bounce again, he would not have been able to make the play. Bruce Fremming, the umpire at first, who missed a call in the seventh inning last night at second, has had a number of tough, close calls at first, and he's had a good night at the first base bag. That's not what Tony Pena thought on that call. He yeah. was out, though. Yeah, he was out. Good call by Fremming, and a, a good hustling play by Pena. Well, again, as Joe said, excuse me, Bob, what a play by Lemke. I mean, he stumbled twice, actually, Joe. Once when he, he tried to right himself, and then when he got off the throw. Wayne Kirby now, batting for Embry who faced only the one hitter Lemke in the Atlanta uniform and with the motion that McMichael has he certainly must remind fans of Gene Garber don't you think Joe yes he does and Garber featured the change up as well down and in two and one that's Jim Poole up for the first time in the Cleveland pen Alejandro Pena back for another tour of duty with Atlanta and back in the postseason. Kirby tries to bunt, fouls it off two and two. And according to Bobby Cox, Alejandro Pena was the last piece of his bullpen puzzle. 
a veteran that has been there before and could bridge the gap between McMichaels and getting to Wohlers, their stopper. With one out and nobody on, here comes the 2-2 pitch. Struck him out. Kirby fans is a pinch hitter. Back to the top now for Lofton. Well, you talk about an outstanding change of pace. Right. Look at how far Kirby is out in front of this one. Again, off speed, down low, and Kirby's gone. And people say, well, haven't the Indians seen change ups and off speed pitches before? And the answer is yes, and they've handled them. But I don't think they've seen anyone that will just constantly throw that change up and in most cases keep it down like that. In the gray, when you, you look at some pitchers, Joe, and, and guys who are, you know, the real hard throwers, I mean, the power pitchers. Base hit for Lofton. Just to continue and, and finish it up, the guys who are the power pitchers and, and throw an excessive 90, and then you have guys like this right. who frustrate you and get you out time after time. A reminder, Tuesday night at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, we'll have game three of the World Series as it moves to Jacobs Field in Cleveland. First pitch is scheduled for 8.20. We're on the air with the pregame at 8 Eastern and 5 Pacific time. The scale 0 for 2 with a walk. Now this is a situation where I believe Lofton can go ahead and steal. And McMichael does not hold the runner very well. Plus he throws a changeup and he takes a while to deliver the ball. Down four to two in the seventh. And you don't have a power bat right at the plate here. So it's not a bad play to go for the steal and try and play for one and cut the lead in half. Well that's the point. You still have two innings to go. So you try to get as close as you can. You do not always have to try to pick everything up at once when you're trailing late in the ball game. But you know the way this series has gone so far Joe it looks like that might be the only option for the Indians. There he goes. The pitch down and in the throw. He has stolen another one. He always goes in head first. In the Ricky Henderson fashion. Well he gets a pretty good jump and again McMichaels doesn't hold the runner well. The throw and you see a lot of bounce throws by the catchers for the Braves because they have to hurry because they know that their pitchers are not holding the runners well and the only way they can get them is a quick and perfect throw. Fiscal takes a strike. You take a look at McMichael see he has plenty of time to run he closed his shoulder right away before he picked up his leg and anytime you do that you let the runner know where you're going with the pitch and a good jump there by Lofton. You know despite the throw being a one hopper Joe if it's on the right field side of the bag Lemke may have a play there. I mean it, it wasn't the toughest of throws to handle but Lopez threw it to the shortstop side. That's his fourth stolen base in two World Series games and his ninth overall in this postseason. Vizquel lines one to left and stumbling is Devereaux and the ball gets past him. A run will score. Vizquel on his way to second and he'll stop there. Well when Devereaux came in they had a superior glove in left field much superior to Klesko but just like that a misplay by Devereaux gives the Indians a run. Well the toughest job in baseball is a defensive replacement. You come in it's a no win situation if you make all the plays you're supposed to. If you do not make the plays you're a goat and that's what happens here. Devereaux slips as the ball is hit pretty hard but you see Vizquel knows he's going to catch it right away and then all of a sudden he slips then he overruns it. And he has to chase it and Lofton comes in to score. I was going to say Joe he, he may have lost that one again that one may have gotten up in the light standards above home plate here just for that moment where Devereaux didn't see it and then when he did made the break and slipped as you said. A one run game at four to three. We're still waiting for the scoring. And ball one to Bayerga. Again, one more time. As Joe said, he overran it. Once he made the commitment, there was no chance for him to come back. He slipped, went down. 
and Vizquel's in at second. Lofton's in. The Indians third run tonight. That guy's a better player than that. Yes. Score at E7. An unearned run. And a 2-0 count now to Bayerga. Even though the balls would have normally been caught, that's a tough error right there. Mm -hmm. The guy did slip and fall. Bayerga's 0 for 3. And ahead on the count, 3-0. He has hit the ball hard his last two times up. As you see, he's had a good postseason. He is playing with a tender ankle wearing an air cast over that ankle after spraining it in his last at bat against Greg Maddox last batter of the game in the ninth here last night his cleat caught at the edge of home plate as he completed a swing three and one Albert Bell is on deck. Also gets by Lopez on his way to third. Vizquel, big turn there. But he is not going to try to duplicate what Kenny Lofton did in Seattle. Well, now with Albert Bell coming up, if it had been Lofton, he may have tried it. Bobby Cox heading out now as McMichael has had problems here in the seventh inning. That was a tough pitch for Lopez to handle, got by him. It's a wild pitch, a walk, Bayerga's aboard, Vizquel moves to third, and here it is one more time. Through the legs of Lopez. Here it is from a different angle. That pitch bounces in front of home plate, and Javier Lopez, thinking the ball was going to come up on him, stayed down through his legs, and there's Vizquel moving to third on the wild pitch. Those are not the easiest for a catcher to handle. I mean, a breaking ball sometimes will bounce up and get you. Those kinds stay down and have a chance to stay between your legs. We'll be back. You ever hear anyone talk about life? Like you gotta chew it up and spit it out? You gotta want it so bad, you can taste it. You gotta be hungry. If so, Gatorade has one question for you. You want something to drink with that? Because you're going to be thirsty. Life is a sport. Drink it up. Let's face it. Fire's the only way to cook a burger. It's true. Like you're stranded on a desert island. What do you want with you? A frying pan or a hibachi? You got to go hibachi. It's no contest. The great tasting flame broiled Whopper. Just $2.99 with fries and a drink at Burger King. The Braun Oral-B plaque remover has a unique cup-shaped brush head that removes plaque more effectively than a manual toothbrush, leaving your teeth so clean you can feel it. The Braun Oral-B plaque remover cleans better than a manual toothbrush. It's NBC Special Comedy Wednesday. On an all-new brotherly love, Joey boldly goes to a Trekkie convention and meets Sulu. Then it's a special Hope and Gloria. And a super special Mad About You with Garth Brooks. Followed by an all-new home court. NBC special Comedy Wednesday. Here's a different look. A little different look at that last pitch in the dirt from McMichael. Watch Lopez try to knock it down. It went through his legs and now rolling toward the lower box seats. And here comes Lopez right in your face. It's a tough pitch for a catcher to handle. Normally on a curve from a right-hander, the ball is going to hit the dirt and bounce to your left. You can get your body in front of it. Fastballs or a screwball effect type pitch from uh, McMichael, as that one was, they have a tendency to stay down on the ground. And, and you, I know, Joe, you've seen it happen a hundred times. I've had it happen that way, where you think the ball's going to come up on you, you lift your glove off the ground, and it stays down and scoots between your legs. Tough pitch for Lopez. And you see what he's done in the pass ball department. So McMichael quickly departs. 
The 36-year-old Alejandro Pena comes in. He was with the Red Sox earlier this year. He faced Albert Bell one time in the American League in 1995, and Bell homered. Well, this is a better matchup for Bell. He's more conventional pitcher, doesn't feature the changeup, comes after you with hard stuff. Strike one to him, first and third, a run home, two down in the seventh. Pena, one of many. Bobby Cox has used as his number one bullpen guy through this stretch of excellence for the Braves, but they've never had anyone hold on to that closer's role for very long until Wohlers established himself at midseason this year. Fastball foul back. Mike Stanton, Juan Berenguer, Pena at various times, Mick Michael for a while, Jeff Reardon, Charlie Liebrand in the postseason in 92. Quickly gets ahead of Bell 0 2. Pop back. Lopez for a look near the screen. Has it. They score one, they strand two. Stretch time in Atlanta. 4 3 Braves. the last time you played in the rain. Let your hair go wild. Flexed your muscles to the world. Stayed up past your bedtime. When was the last time you really had fun in a car? Riviera by Buick. Go ahead. Express yourself. For cars that can benefit from higher octane, Texaco Clean System 3 Power Plus and Power Premium are formulated to clean your engine's intake valves, fuel injectors, and combustion chambers while you're driving to give you smooth starts and sure acceleration. Just give us five tanks, and we think Power Plus and Power Premium will make quite an impression on you. Add more life to your car! Take it to the star! Time marches on, and if you haven't planned for your retirement, you're losing ground. If you're like most Americans, you probably haven't saved enough, long enough, to retire on solid ground. That's why there's Sun America. Ask your financial advisor about Sun America today, because the only thing that goes faster than money is time. Look to the sun, Sun America. Next Sunday at 12.30 Eastern, total coverage of the NFL on NBC. A key battle in the AFC East. Jim Kelly and the Bills take on the Miami Dolphins. The Cleveland Browns battle touchdown King Carl Pickens and the Bengals. All regional action. The NFL on NBC. Made in America. Played in America. Next Sunday. This ball just about grazed the screen on the way down, but Lopez had a play. Uh, here's, a, here's a play that a lot of catchers have a tendency to overrun sometimes. Run back too quickly. Throw the mask off and then charge back and you have to backpedal. But Lopez took a nice easy trot. The ball, as you said, Bob, close to the screen. He had plenty of room to make the catch. Larry Chambers, Uke, is still up there in the Goodyear blimp Stars and Stripes from Pompano Beach, Florida. I want to ride in that thing one day. I really do. Joe asked about it today, too. <laughs> Jim Poole, another lefty, finesse guy, doesn't throw all that hard. Into the game as we move to the bottom of the seventh. So Chipper Jones bats right-handed. And he'll be followed by two left-handed hitters, McGriff and Justice. Jones has a double, a single, and a sacrifice fly. Another good night. In there, one and two. Tavares, the right-hander. Asenmacher, the lefty.
They only use Mesa with a lead, obviously, and almost always for only one inning, regardless of the situation. Even in the postseason, Mike Hargrove has never varied from that pattern that served him so well during the year when Mesa was successful in 46 of 48 save situations. Two two pitch to Jones rolled to short it comes up for Vizquel and he's got him at first. Now McGriff one guy Dennis Martinez was successful against while Dennis was in there able to keep the ball down on him. Hit the ball back to the mound twice. Then grounded into a 4 6 3 double play. <laughs> Martinez right now stands to be the loser. Glavin the winner. 4 3 Braves. 0 oh 2. You know, and again, it wasn't the fact that Martinez pitched all that badly tonight. I mean, this this Indian club, for the most part, has been shut down. I mean, the guys who you figure, and it's not going to be a home run every time they're up there. But I mean, because you're a long ball hitter, it doesn't mean home runs. It, it means balls in the gap, doubles and triples, which has not happened tonight. A pop up on the infield, and Vizquel, who will win almost certainly his third consecutive Gold Glove, makes the play. Next Saturday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern, the Breeders' Cup, live from Belmont Park in New York. Always one of the great days in thoroughbred racing, and we'll have it for you at 11.30 in the morning, Eastern time. You'd have been a good jock. Huh? You like horses? I can see you in the yeah. irons. See you on top cigar <laughs> in the irons with that crop in your hand and whipping that horse to the finish line. I can see it. Have to, have to take off a few lbs. No, you're all get, right. Get down, to that, you know, get down to that 98 or 100 pounds for a jockey. That's a huge horse. He can carry it. Justice ahead of pool two and zero. Oh. Two out, nobody on in the bottom of the seventh. Here it is again, that little breaking ball, and David Justice <laughs> on a check swing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Justice, a pair of singles and a walk tonight. See him talking to himself? Well, you know what he's doing? He's trying to make himself stay mm -hmm. back. Uh, yep. In the last couple of series, especially the one against Cincinnati, he said he was jumping out there too quickly, and he thought he did the same thing last night. He said he's going to have to try to stay back, and I think that's what he's doing, saying to himself, stay back, stay back. And he's doing a pretty good job of it. Yeah, it's nice to say stay back, Joe, and, and you also yeah. got to tell yourself, and especially against the left-hander, stay in there. Stay in there. I mean, don't let your backside fly out. <laughs> Talking to himself right now. Throw me another good one. Throw me something close. In their full count. Yeah, but I think he wanted a fastball mm -hmm. right there. You're right. Absolutely. <laughs> That's Jim McKean. Is that a pretty good pitch? <laughs> McKean of the American League has the plate tonight. Freming of the National League in game three Tuesday. This ball well hit to right, but Ramirez retreats and tucks it away. So Poole sets them down in order in the seventh. Two more cracks at it for the Indians, down by one. Dad? Yeah? There's uh, something I want to tell you. What is it, son? Well, Dad, you're my dad. And I love you, man. You're not getting my Bud Light, Johnny. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Ray, forget it, Johnny. You've always made a great team. Together growing, dreaming, caring, and 
sharing the rewards along the way. Park Avenue. For the comfort, for the luxury, for the quality. Congratulations, you've earned it. Buick Park Avenue. This is about how you go to sleep one day, running your business the same way you always have, and wake up the next morning with things like email, voicemail, PCs, pages, a new communications network for free. It's not a fairy tale, a myth, or a parable. This is about how things can really happen. This is about opening your eyes instead of closing them, and making a call instead of a wish. Network MCI, that's how. Emma, it seems like we've known each other forever. Yeah, I know, two weeks. Will you marry me? Because Emma, I love you, man. Oh, Johnny, you're not getting my Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Johnny? Make it a Bud Light. Jane? It's Joan. Jane, Joan, whatever. I feel like I've known you forever. Temperatures were in the mid-60s as this game began in Atlanta, and we understand it was also a mild day in Cleveland. Considering how cold it was for Game 5 of the LCS, a lot of people were concerned about the weather conditions for Games 3, 4, and 5 in Cleveland. Right now, the forecast for Tuesday again calls for mild temperatures, high 50s, low 60s, but a chance of rain on Tuesday. Alejandro Pena will work into the eighth, but Mark Wallers has already gotten up to throw in the Atlanta bullpen. With Eddie Murray at first base, with the DH not part of the game in the National League City, that means that Paul Sorrento, a left-handed hitter who ordinarily would be in the game, is available as a pinch hitter. Now, it's amazing what a left-hander does to the Indian lineup. I mean, with Sorrento, a guy who normally hits eighth in the Indian lineup and is a big home run hitter. There he is right there. Paul Sorrento, big power man, but in the Seattle series, he was he was kept on the bench, and here in this series thus far. Murray fouls the first one back. Actually, Herbert Perry, the right-handed hitter, might have started tonight against the lefty Glavin, although, as we've pointed out, with left-handed hitters doing so much better against Glavin than righties, maybe, had the DH been available to him, Murray would have DH and Sorrento would have played first base for Hargrove tonight. In any case, Sorrento would have been the starter last night against Maddox, and he has seen no action at all to this point. Absolutely. There is Herbert Perry. Right-handed batting first baseman, a youngster with power. But again, when, when I mean, you have to keep Murray in the lineup, and, he, and he's proven his worth for sure. But again, the, to keep that kind of a bat out of the lineup, Joe, a, a guy like Sorrento, who, who, who can hit and hit you deep, can hit for average. Two and one to Murray. Well, what you have to look at is the fact that the only guys they might pinch hit for are Pena and Martinez. If we look at the fastball inside, Eddie just kind of loses balance. It wasn't that far in. And you'll take a look. So it's not that far off the plate, but Eddie gets lost his balance a little bit. And you're working to his one-time Dodger teammate, Eddie Murray. Reaches for it, lifts it to center. Grissom has it lined up. One down in the eighth. It'll be Ramirez. When you compare stats across leagues, you've always got to take it with a couple of extra grains of salt. But Cleveland hit 291 for the year. Atlanta hit 250. Cleveland hit 207 home runs with the DH, of course, to 160 for the Braves. They stole almost twice as many bases, 132 to 73. And although Atlanta's pitching is the best in baseball, Cleveland's was the best in the American League. I really didn't think there would be that much of a difference. Joe and I were talking about it, and, and you talked about it yesterday, Bob. The fact that this Atlanta pitching staff is that good that they can really shut this club down. And, and basically, that's what they've done. And especially in situations where you've had a runner. I mean, Lofton is a guy that's really created the stuff for the Indians so far. 
steals and, and moving up on wild pitches and, and some daring base running. But I mean uh, they have shut this this Indian club down. I'm, I'm sure the Indians are just as surprised as everybody else unless you're a National League fan and a Braves fan. One one from Pena exceeds 90 on the gun broken bat looper center field no one can get it. Billiard out and Grissom in and it drops between them for a one out single the second hit of the night for Ramirez and both times he has broken his bat the first time he hit one toward the end this one he breaks it on the handle but he's strong enough to get a base hit and a good effort here by Billiard he gets out there and almost gets there but not quite. And the Indians now have the go ahead run in the person of Jim Tomey. And we've seen him in this position before. Tomey tonight is 0 for 3. It's another guy that, I mean, anything from the middle inside really likes to open up and, and, and really turn around on you. He can go the other way. We saw him do that in the league championship series. With a two run homer to left. But I mean basically he tries to take it to right and deep. I mean hit you hard. He's a throwback hitter in your mind right Joe. Yeah he reminds me of the throwback hitters the old third baseman like and one comes to mind Eddie Matthews. He gets his hips out of the way and he can pull the bat through it helps him hit with it. He hits really with his upper body because he's so strong. His hips clear so he can get the bat through the zone. And by doing that, he can keep a lot of those inside pitches fair where a lot of hitters would have to pull them foul. Look at the way the outfield plays, Tommy. I mean, we're, we're talking about him trying to turn a ball. Look at Devereaux in right. He's only about 40 feet off, I should say, in left. Only about 40 feet off the line in left. Grissom in center, slightly in the left center, and then Justice deep in right. Well, I guess the answer to that is they're going to try to run the fastball away from him. That's the only thing I can think of because to play him that far around. Yeah, they're trying to stay away, of course. And, and Pena, if he throws you the good fastball away, it's going to be difficult for you to pull it down the line. What Pena likes to do, especially against left-handed hitters, is to go to that fork ball, especially when he gets you down two strikes. There's Lopez. It's going to be a fastball probably away. Let's see. Big gaps in left and right center for Tommy, but as Joe said, and, and from what Lopez is putting down and indicating, they want to stay away. Go away with hard stuff. Let's see. Fastball inside, fastball away. This guy made a couple of good pitches on Bell Joe with a high fastball to get him to foul out. And then Murray on a high heater when he hit that fly ball to center. The one one pitch. Two and one. Was that a change up? Yes. Like a change of pace. Yeah, well he asked for the fastball in he said no he asked for the fastball away he said no and then he decided on the change up. Bobby Cox defending his ball club saying hey we haven't won the World Series it's true but we could have won a couple of times we've accomplished so much I don't feel we have anything to prove we want to win because it's nice to win not for vindication. Now this ought to be the fastball away now Lopez setting up outside there it is. Mm -hmm. Nobody aboard at second and Lopez. As, as a lot of catchers do I mean a lot of guys like to go through that whole different set of signs Lopez and I know Charlie O'Brien works that way as do a lot of other catchers put down one where you want it you see Lopez indicate with his index finger that means he wants it away from Tommy if he puts down one with his little finger he wants it inside let's see what he does here now if Tommy is mindful of the scouting reports he's got to be thinking about the fork ball or split finger in this situation. Fastball inside. A throw in to first base and they got him. Ramirez with the mistake of a youngster 
in a World Series game, straying off first. That was a planned pickoff play, though. You saw the sign by Javier Lopez inside, and then he gave him the fist, like purely pumping in there. And see, he's already throwing already. He's ready to go. That was a planned play. They saw Ramirez was getting too big a lead at first base. Oh, and they had him by plenty, Joe. Great pitch by Pena for a catcher to throw on. Right, up and in. tight, come right out behind the hitter. There's nobody in your way. I mean, you got a clear shot to first, and he threw a strike. And now Tommy draws a walk. Wow, what a big play. Yeah, but see, they wanted to pick Ramirez off. Once they picked Ramirez off, they were saying to themselves, I do not have to give in to Tommy anymore. This is a big, big play. And he had him by plenty. Fremming right on it. A perfect strike by Lopez. Oh, boy. Mike Hargrove, Buddy Bell. <clears throat> big play. So, Joe, you're saying on that play, it's set up not just between the catcher and the first baseman, but the pitch itself yeah, oh, the is pitch. designed to give Lopez the location to throw on. Well, did you see? He gave the sign as one inside, and he... And he, then he pumped his fist like up and in, mm -hmm. which he wanted a good mustard on the fastball, which he got, and he turned and fired to first base. Now Hargrove is going to go to his bench, and Bobby Cox will do the same. Cox is going to have a double switch in place here. Polonia to left. Justice comes out of the game, and Devereaux goes to right. Pena's still on the hill, but let's see if Cox is coming to get him. Wollers is coming in from the bullpen, so that's it for Pena. And Sorrento will pinch hit for Tony Pena. So with two out in the eighth, Waller's out of the bullpen, Sorrento off the bench, and we step aside for a moment. One defining moment begins with a lifetime of dedication. From the first steps away from a mother's arms to a thousand struggles through the years. And now with the world on the line, Every moment comes together, and every dream comes true. The Olympics, America's Games, on NBC. The story broke headlines. A principal stole their innocence. Everybody thinks he's such a wonderful person, but he's not. He is sexually harassing the students. One teacher knew how to stop him. I have nothing to hide. You're not getting away with any of this. This just isn't... Right. Inspired by the electrifying true story of the woman who risked her life to expose the truth. You were warned. You robbed them of their self-respect. Nothing's more precious than that. Stephanie Kramer, Michael Gross, in a Moment of Truth movie, Deceived by Trust, NBC Monday. Let's watch the signals. He's going to give the sign inside. Now watch him pump it up. Give it to him. Now watch him look down at McGriff right there. He makes eye contact. Now here comes the ball right where he wanted. He doesn't take any time. He comes up firing to first base. I mean, he didn't look to see if Ramirez was off. He just came up firing to first base. No hesitation, and that's what made the play. How about the look on Tommy's face here? <laughs> Joe, he doesn't know what's going on. And he doesn't does. know it's a pickoff play. And neither did Ramirez. No, he sure didn't. <laughs> and a swipe tag by McGriff, but... Pena was the key to that. I mean, King, Pena was the key, right? He right. made a perfect pitch. High inside fastball. Lopez had no problem. I mean, Tomei really didn't have to get out of the way. If Tomei falls backward, Joe, or if he ducks down, then he impedes the throw of Lopez. But it was perfect. High and inside, you just move the guy back a little bit and come out throwing. Perfect pitch by Pena. And a big, big play. Wow. Ramirez alone with his thoughts in the corner of the dugout. Sorrento has come out of that dugout. He had 235 for the year with 25 homers. This is his first at bat of the World Series. He was 0 for 2 with a walk as a reserve for the Twins in 91 in the World Series against the Braves. Mark Wallers, who sometimes reaches triple digits on the radar gun, comes in.
could hear the catcher's glove pop all the way up here. Wow. <laughs> that last fastball approaching three digits <laughs> at 98. I guess, Bob, what's the difference between 98 and 100? Not, when it not gets up much that to high, me. When it gets up that high, it's almost impossible. Mm -hmm. Tommy at first with two out. That one reaches 99, and Sorrento skies it to center with Grissom starting in, then circling back and tucking it away. No runs a hit. A base running gaff. A man is left, and it's still 4 3. My dandruff and itch are awful. I'll try anything. Denerex tingles. Head and shoulders doesn't. Both have effective dandruff medicine, but Denerex has something extra that tingles, feels fresh. That's why I started using Denerex. No flakes, no itch. Denerex, the serious dandruff shampoo. When was the last time you played in the rain? Let your hair go wild. Flexed your muscles to the world. Stayed up past your bedtime. When was the last time you really had fun in a car? Riviera by Buick. Go ahead. Express yourself. Let's face it. Fire's the only way to cook a burger. It's true. Like you're stranded on a desert island. What do you want with you? A frying pan or a hibachi? You gotta go hibachi. It's no contest. The great tasting flame broiled Whopper. Just $2.99 with fries and a drink at Burger King. We're into the future. In conclusion, our balance sheet has never been. If we miss our plane, we've got problems. One more thought. We must continue we've got to problems. We missed our plane. I can tell you when the next one leaves. Introducing Avis Flight Check, our exclusive up to the minute flight information at car return. Another first from the employee owners of Avis. Terminal B, gate two. You can just make it. And I thought we had problems. No, we have Avis. Try and hold on and see how. Next Sunday, another bestseller becomes an NBC event. Three passionate lovers. There's been an accident. Two mysterious murders. One shocking ending. Oh, my God. Melrose places Daphne Zuniga, Jags David James Elliott, NYPD Blues Sharon Lawrence, and sisters Patricia Callenber. No motive, no witness, no case. Degree of guilt, NBC next Sunday. Here's the MCI proof positive replay of the game. The one we were just focusing on. And again, a perfect pitch by Pinion. What Joe and I were talking about a moment ago, Tommy had nothing to do except lean back. No falling out of the way to impede the throw from Lopez, and he fired a bullet. And and they had him. That was not even that was not even close, Joe, when you're talking about a pickoff play. I mean, you get a guy picked off first base by a footer, so that's a lot from a catcher, especially from a catcher. Tavares, the right-hander, comes out of the bullpen after Sorrento hit for Pena. We've got a new catcher, and it's Alomar. Alomar is going to hit in the ninth spot, and the pitcher assumes the eighth spot in the order vacated by Pena and Sorrento. So Alomar would be the leadoff man in the top of the ninth. So you're saying Hargrove is making that infamous double switch. Here's Devereaux who came into the game for defense and left promptly betrayed the Braves and allowed an unearned run with a two base error but that's uncharacteristic for him. I'll tell you what if that second one was a strike and it was not a check swing strike that was a strike two or a strike three a strike also <laughs> and strike three four three Braves as they bat in the bottom of the eighth. Lifted to the right side, Ramirez comes loping in for the catch. Ramirez, no doubt, out there in right field, replaying that pickoff. Very embarrassing and very costly, at least potentially, in the World Series. And this is a heck of a game tonight, as was last night. I mean, this, this two-game series here in Atlanta a, a, has been great. It really has. To watch Maddox last night and, and Hershiser and tonight was a, a couple of odd plays in this ball game, and the Braves with a chance to make it two in a row. Now the man of the hour, Lopez, is grazed by that pitch and trots down to first. He had homered to snap the two all ties last time up in the sixth, and in the previous at bat, 
He had sent Bell to the wall to haul in his long drive. That's the way you like to be hit if you're going to be hit. It just barely ruffles your shirt. Well, they had given up a home run on the ball out over the plate, so I'm sure they were determined to pitch him inside, not that far in, but determined that they were going to pitch him inside and not let him extend his arms again. Got me, he said. Yard the shortstop. Cuts and misses. Polonia occupies the ninth spot. When they took Justice out a while ago, it was because he had made the last out in the bottom of the seventh. So the pitcher assumes that spot, number five, and Polonia is in the ninth spot and on deck. I'm surprised that they're not bunning with Belliard here and just to try to get one more run for Wollers in the, in the ninth inning. Bouncing ball to short. Can they turn two? There's one. Bayerga gets rid of it, and they do. In the ninth, Alomar, Lofton, and Vizquel. There are a lot of women out there that become pregnant each year. While I was pregnant, I could feel that the lap and shoulder belt were properly positioned, but I didn't know if that would protect the baby in a car crash. GM is working on the development of the pregnant dummy. This dummy's going to be a mom. I, I think we need a better understanding, and the best way is to develop a prototype and test it. I think that pregnancy is a very happy time in people's lives. It's my goal as a mother to protect them. Over the last 150 years, all kinds of companies that said they'd be there when you needed them didn't stand up to their promises. That's life. Our policy of thoughtful, prudent investing has kept us, well, a pillar of strength for the last 150 years. That's New York Life, the company you keep. Major League Baseball Home Video presents the ultimate series souvenir, the official 1995 World Series video. All the drama of the 1995 World Series, plus exclusive interviews are showcased in this remarkable video. To order the 95 World Series video for 1995 plus 495 shipping, use your credit card and call 1-800-787-6227. 1-800-787-6227. Friday, a family camping trip becomes a young mother's nightmare. I just couldn't do anything. A real life river wild on Unsolved Mysteries, all new NBC Friday. Hello everyone, I'm Rick Chambers in the Channel 4 Newsroom with an update on the day's top stories. The sister of murder victim Ron Goldman was speaking out today. Kim Goldman went on the air at a local radio station to talk about the verdict and the civil suit against O.J. Simpson. And highway patrol officers are looking tonight for the hit and run driver responsible for this. A terrible accident that left seven members of one family dead. Also, Cuban President Fidel Castro speaking out to the General Assembly at the 50th anniversary of the UN. We'll have more updates throughout the night here on Channel 4. Stay with us. Well, we had assumed that Mike Hargrove would double switch and let Sandy Alomar Jr. lead this inning off, but instead, Alomar is in the number eight spot. The pitcher remained number nine. And the only left-handed bat he had, and this is why we assumed that Alomar would be the leadoff man, is the switch hitter, Ruben Amaro, who hit just 200 for the year and 60 at-bats, although from the left side he was six for 20, and that's 300. He was on the Phillies club that went to the World Series in 1993 after beating the Braves in the LCS, and he has better speed than Alomar, so should he get aboard to begin the inning, it would give Hargrove a few more options strategically. He better have some bat speed here against Walters, <laughs> leading off in the ninth. This is the guy, Ruben Amaro Jr., they decided to keep on the roster instead of Dave Winfield, the 25th man for the postseason. And the reason they did it is because of the speed. Winfield in uniform as he has been for all three series, but ineligible. Wohler's trying to save it for Glavin. 98 miles an hour, but outside the strike zone, and he's behind 2-0. 
Came got on him. and got Sorrento, I was going to say, to win the eighth inning on a fastball with a fly to center. Missed twice here on tomorrow. But he did struggle to close a couple of games against the Colorado Rockies in that series. He got it done, but he struggled a little bit. Walked a couple of hitters. He knew he was going to make him throw a strike. And he did at 98. But that's the right thing to do if you're leading off as a pinch hitter and especially a guy that's not known for his power. You make them throw you a strike. Braves outfield playing a mile to hit the other way with Walters throwing in the 90s range. The outfield swung around towards left. They don't feel that Amaro is going to be able to pull it. Polonia shallow in left and close to the line. Now they're making noise here in Atlanta now. Two outs away from a 2 0 lead. Three, I should say. But with only the slimmest of margins to work with. Struck him out to begin the night. This 1995 World Series game is brought to you by Bud Light, official sponsor of the 1996 U.S. Olympic team and the Centennial Olympic Games in Atlanta. Make it a Bud Light, Texaco Clean System 3 gasolines, and the men and women of General Motors. Got a brief glimpse of Dave Winfield a moment ago. One of the great moments of his career came in this ballpark. He delivered the double off Charlie Liebrand in extra innings that Wound up winning game six of the World Series in 92 for the Blue Jays. The series deciding hit. Here's Lofton. A bouncing ball. Jones has it. Throws him out. If Jones, who was in close, had been unable to cut that ball off and it had to be Belliard charging from short, no way he gets Lofton. No chance to get him whatsoever. And again, Walters with a great fastball. And here's Lofton beating it into the ground. Jones quickly off the line. And an easy play. Easy play for the second out in the ninth. The scale is hitless. And a strike. That's through for a hit as Wallers tried to barehand it. He couldn't do what Omar routinely does barehand the ball. That was a hot shot. He hit the ball pretty well. Low fastball, and again, Wallers up into the air. He never really had a chance at the ball. It looked like it hit him off the fingers. So the Indians with a tying run aboard. Not done yet. And that's just a reaction by Wallers. If he could have thought quickly enough, you would never put your pitching hand up there on a ball hit that sharply. The Skell stole 29, second on the team, the Lofton's 54 in the regular season. By Erga. Takes it high. He's 0 for 3 with a walk. But he's lined out hard once to left and once to right in this game. The Wallers does not hold runners very well. He has a slow delivery to the plate. But I don't think the Indians are going to risk being thrown out at second base for the final out of the game. I think they're going to let Bayerga hit. You got to at least. Give this guy a chance and get Bell up there, Joe. Right. The 1 0 pitch grounded foul during the regular season. 
Baerga had 90 RBIs. Remember, they played only 144. And he hit over 300 again at 314. He is a very fine offensive player. I mean, he has done some things that only the great Roger Hornsby has done. 200 hits, 100 RBIs, hit over 300. This was the fourth straight season that he topped the 300 mark. Wohlers trying to finish it and send the Braves to Cleveland up 2-0 with their second consecutive one-run victory. Miskell is going on the 1-1 pitch, and there's no throw. A single could tie this game. Hargrove showed me something there. Normally, managers do not want to have the game in with their runner being thrown out of second base. But again, Wohlers does not hold runners well. And look at the high leg kick, high slow leg kick. And Vizquel had a great jump, no throw from Lopez. He had about a five-step jump, Joe, after his lead. And despite the fact that Wohlers is throwing in the high 90s, Lopez had no shot. Put that ball in your pocket. He had no chance for Vizquel at second. And the 2 1 pitch. Up high, 3 and 1, with Bell waiting. Polonia, we know, has a weak arm in left. Grissom, you said earlier, average arm in center, Joe. What about Devereaux, who's now in right? Again, Devereaux throws pretty well. Nothing outstanding. But again, with two outs, you're not going to get Vizquel at the plate. None of the outfielders are going to be able to throw him out with two outs. He's going to be running on contact, and he runs well. They will not have a shot at him. The 3-1 pitch. Fouled off full count. He had one to hit. Fastball right down the pipe. He had one to drive and hit deep and fouled it back. Well, the ball has to be down if you're going to face Wohlers and drive the ball. It has to be down. Wohlers with the Braves since the early 90s. Never able to seize that closer's role until after this year began. Suddenly it all came together for him. The 3-2 is coming. And we'll do it all over again. Well, and it's great. This situation Guy throwing hard, hitter sitting on a fastball, and a guy with power. The tying run aboard. He's the lead run. And Roller steps off. Three, two. And this one is popped up. It's Chipper Jones. And it's 2 nothing Atlanta. of this decade this is the first time the Braves have won the first two games in 91 they lost the first two in Minnesota won three here then dropped the sixth and seventh games back at the Metrodome the next year against Toronto they split the first two here wound up losing in six now they take a two nothing lead to Cleveland well we talked about how dominating the Atlanta Braves pitching staff was and they have showed it here in the first two games and Walters again to close out by Ergot Joe with a high fastball and getting him on a pop-up to end it. 
Well, again, in the past, the bullpen has been a liability. Now it's their security blanket. Whenever he goes to the bullpen late, he knows he's going to get a good performance out of there. And I think that's the difference in this Braves ball club compared to the one in 91 and 92. Glavin wins. Martinez loses. Dennis Martinez. Waller's the save. Murray a homer in the losing cause for Cleveland, which briefly gave them a 2-0 lead. Javier Lopez, the home run that turned out to be the game winner. So tonight, Chevrolet player of the game is all together now. Yeah, Javier, Javier Lopez. Lopez. <laughs> for his work with the bat and behind the plate with the key pickoff of Manny Ramirez. Here's the home run. The game was tied 2-2 when he touched this one off in the sixth against Dennis Martinez. It just kept carrying over the center field fence. So in conjunction with this program Chevrolet will contribute a total of fifty thousand dollars to the Boys and Girls Clubs of America in the names of all players of the game for the nineteen ninety five Major League Baseball season down to Jim Gray who's with tonight's hero. All right. Thank you very much Bob. I am with Javi Lopez. Javi can you tell us about the home run that you hit in the sixth inning there. Oh my God. I still can't believe it. But now that I did you know I have to enjoy it and celebrate with my teammate now that we won. And that was the key of the game, that home run, because we, we won just for one run. And uh, it was kind of exciting. I was trying to be uh, very aggressive because I knew he got men on, on uh, third base. And he didn't want to throw any pitch in the dirt. So he was trying to bounce right down the middle, tried to surprise me. And, um, and I guess that pitch is going to be right down the middle. And I took advantage of it. Did you feel as though Tom Glavin struggled tonight? No, actually, he was throwing pretty good. I mean, now that he don't got, he, he doesn't have the best stuff today, but at least he, he knew how, how to work with it. And uh, he was bouncing the corners, and um, he pitched a pretty good game. He don't give up only two runs, only one home run, and um, he threw pretty good. Did you feel as though the key play of this game was throwing out Ramirez there in the eighth inning? And tell us about that play. Oh, that was a big, big out. I mean, I saw Ramirez take a lead, up, a big lead in first base, and I'm, and I get in touch with uh, Fred McGriff. And he saw me when I gave it the sign. So the next pitch I threw right at him and uh, we took him out. Congratulations, Javi, on a great night. Thank you. Let's go back upstairs to Bob Costas. Well, Joe and Bob, one guy who is going to be, I would think, in a pensive mood on the flight from Atlanta to Cleveland is Charles Nagy. The weight of the world on his shoulders come Tuesday night. He is the game three starter. It's been a week and a half since he worked and pitched brilliantly in a matchup with Randy Johnson in game three of the LCS at Jacobs Field. He will oppose John Smoltz who has been an excellent postseason pitcher throughout his Atlanta career. We're going to step aside here for just a moment. We'll be back to wrap things up from Atlanta in a moment. Tomorrow on In the House, Marion's therapist gets physical. Let's get you healed. And now she's stalking you. She's a few pancakes short of a stack. In Living Colors, Kim Wayans will stop at nothing. I shaved my mustache. Until Jackie makes her move. In the House, NBC tomorrow. Montana, four Super Bowl victories. Ditka, three rings as player and coach. Gibbs, three championships. McDonough has been to every Super Bowl. I played in one. I hosted one. The NFL on NBC, loaded with talent, headed for Super Bowl 30. Happy fans filing out. They've come close too often to take anything for granted, but they've never had a 2-0 lead in the World Series before. On this, their third trip, they take that 2-0 edge to Cleveland, and we take it down to the field again. Jim Gray is with Tom Glavin. Jim? All right, thank you, Bob. Tom, were you a little bit off tonight? Were you struggling a tad? Oh, yeah, I was having a little bit of a tough time, particularly with my fastball. I uh, wasn't as consistent with the location as I wanted to be with it, but uh, fortunately, the one pitch that worked real well for me was my changeup, and if I have to have one pitch work, and that's the pitch I need to get going, and uh, I was just fortunate I made some decent pitches in key situations. The guys played great defense behind me, and, and uh, that seemed to be the difference. It's gone the other way at times in the postseason for the Braves. Do you feel as though you got away with one and, and, and you guys kind of stole one tonight? Well, I think we, uh, you know, we, we came out of here in another game that we very easily could have lost. But, uh, you know, that's the nature of postseason play. When you get two teams that are as evenly matched as this, uh, Every game, I think, is going to come down to the wire, and you're going to be, have a situation where one player or another and the other team may win. But uh, we've been fortunate this postseason. We've made the plays we've had to make and got the key hits when we've had to, and we've come out on the winning end. 
Tom, you guys have never been up 2-0 in a World Series. How will you approach this differently now, and is it that big of a difference going up 2-0 as opposed to being in the other situations you've been? Well, I think it's a big difference being uh, up 2-0 opposed to being 1-1. You know, uh, obviously 1-1, the season series is even and anything can happen, but still got to get to four. Yeah, you do, uh, but we're in a, in a good position right now, and, uh, you know, I, I like our chances with Smoltz going out there uh, in game three with a two-game lead, and, and by no means is this thing over, but... Uh, it's a, it, you know, obviously it's the best position we could possibly be in, and uh, you know, now it's just up to us to take advantage of it. Smoltz and Nagy, game three. Can you evaluate that for us? Well, I think it's going to be a great matchup. You know, Smoltz has been a great postseason pitcher for us. Uh, you know, Nagy's had a great year, and, and uh, you know, pitched pretty well in the postseason. So, uh, I suspect you're going to see another game like you saw these two nights, where it's uh, tough pitching and, and it comes down to some clutch hits. Tom, thanks for coming out. Okay, Good Jim, luck you're welcome. Thanks. All right, let's go back upstairs to Bob Costas. Jim, thanks a lot with Bob Euchre and Joe Morgan. You know, you got to like Javi Lopez for another reason. Besides the defense and the home run, we knew Glavin was struggling. Glavin <laughs> knew he was struggling. But publicly, Lopez, the young catcher, was not going to say that. No, he didn't. And I think that's, uh, that's what every catcher tries to do for a pitcher or for his staff. I mean, sometimes a manager will come out to the mound and say, what's he got? It's not the catcher's, it's not the catcher's choice to say, he doesn't have anything. I'd get him out of here. Because if the guy stays on and finishes the game, you're the guy who looks bad. I'll tell you what, Glavin, I thought, did a great job tonight. I mean, he had to make pitches, and he made them when he had to. And the big guy, Lopez, with the big home run and that, and that great pickoff play at first. Taking the 2-0 lead now makes it virtually certain that Steve Avery will pitch game four rather than Greg Maddox. Now, Maddox could come back. Although he's been used only once this year on three days rest, having thrown only 93 pitches, he could come back and pitch the fourth game if they were trailing. But I think it's almost certain now, Joe, that Bobby Cox will say, why not give Maddox his usual rest, bring him back 100% and strong in game five, especially because Avery pitched well his last time out. Well, not only last time out, he pitched up well his last four times out, three in the regular season and also in the postseason against Cincinnati. And remember one thing, Steve Avery is one of the top pitchers on this staff. Everyone thought that Steve Avery was going to be the best pitcher in this group because he has the better fastball he has a good curveball he has a lot of you know stuff going for him but I like John Smoltz I think John Smoltz in postseason play has proven that he knows how to win I mean he's won LCS games and he's also won World Series games for them well now you here are the Cleveland Indians 100 victories and 44 losses in the regular season we mentioned in the LCS the only times they really played from behind all year they lost the first game to Seattle and then they were down 2 one but they have never been this deep in a hole all year long and that maybe takes a little bit of the strut out of your stride they have been clearly the best team in their league they go home now down 0 2 well I think a lot of people are uh, are surprised Bob I think a lot of Indians fans are very very surprised I am too and not to take anything away from the Braves because I thought um, you know the Indians would come in here and score a lot more runs than they did not maybe a lot but because they do have a pretty good pitching staff themselves I thought might get out of here at least one 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 thing I do know we're going to Cleveland yes <laughs> that is correct I'll see you on board the flight tomorrow and that game will be on NBC at eight o'clock Eastern time five o'clock Pacific that's when we come on the air the game is scheduled to start at about 8.20 Eastern Time from Jacobs Field, and they will truly be rocking and rolling in that <laughs> ballpark and in that city, the home of the new Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. A quick look back at some of what transpired tonight in the second following the single by Bell. The high fastball from Glavin is taken out of the park over the left field fence by the ageless Eddie Murray for a 2-0 lead. But after the game had been tied at 2, Dennis Martinez weakening, puts the fastball out over the heart of the plate. Lopez went and got it. It clears the center field fence, gave them a 4-2 lead. The Indians got back to within 4-3 and had Ramirez at first with one out in the eighth when they threw in behind him. And Lopez picked him off with the throw to McGriff. Look at the reaction from Mike Hargrove. Ramirez, the youngster, making the mistake and straying too far. The Indians put men on base after they got within a run, but they could never punch that tying run home. Little Rafi Belliard has to jump at 5-6 to accept the high five from a teammate. It's Lopez who's standing especially tall tonight. Lemke behind him, one of those who have been on two previous World Series teams that came just this close but didn't quite get there. Different reaction on the other side for Joe Morgan and I'm Bob, and Bob Euchre. I'll be Bob Costas. He can be Euchre. Good night, everybody. <laughs> the 95 World Series. The Breeders' Cup. Super Bowl 30. The NBA Finals. 
the Olympic Games, all on America's sports leader, NBC. This telecast has been produced by the Baseball Network in association with NBC Sports.